Uh, round 18 continues. Saturday afternoon football takes us up north as the visiting Saints take on the Gold Coast Suns after what has been a big week for the football club with the sacking of coach Stuart Jew. After 121 games in charge, he leaves after losing three or four games post the bye and a 7-9 and nine record on the season. But the man taking over as caretaker for the remainder of the season did play 47 games for St Kilda and he's joining our very own Alistair Lynch on the boundary. Thanks, Joey. Uh, Steve, thanks for joining us. It's been a massive week, obviously, and the boys had a couple of days off. What was your message to them late in the week to get the reset and get them focused on the game? Yeah, look, obviously everyone deals with these situations differently, and um, I think the boys have handled it really well. Just about getting back to being proactive, uh, enjoy what the game is. It's just a game, but also being ready that, you know, the game doesn't wait for anyone. So I think we've gotten together really well as a group and looking forward to how they respond today. Uh, in a couple of days, we can't expect a, a different game plan or anything like that, but do you expect us to see something different in the way you perform today? Oh, look, we've brought Elijah Hollands in this week. Um, I think the boys just backed in the play to their strengths a little bit. Um, you're right, in times like these, you just got to keep things really simple. So just real clarity of roles today and make sure they play for each other. In, in a lot of ways, a massive game for both teams, but for St Kilda as well. What do you see as their major asset that you've had on the whiteboard? Oh, look, they're a great pressure team. They're really well structured and they're a ruthless footy club with Ross at the helm. So we, we, we expect that they're going to be at their best again today. So we've just got to make sure we respect their pressure and, and, and play footy from there. No worries. Well, thanks for your time and all the best uh, today. Thanks, Lichie. All the best to Stephen King as I welcome in David King and Dermot Brereton. Your thoughts from what, the past week? Yeah, I mean, obviously tumultuous for all the players and the the club in general. But they, they sit there with seven wins. They're only two wins behind. We're talking about how well St Kilda have gone this season. They sit two wins behind them. So they're two hours away from being four points off. A team we're saying going really well. Um, it's going to be tough for them. We have a look at what they're going to field out there. There's young Elijah Holland, so he makes his way back. A fresh set of eyes with the call on certain players. You always see a couple of newies come in or, or resurface, and Hollands gets his chance under Stephen King. I like how they've played at stages through this year, the Gold Coast Suns. They are tough. They're honest at the contest, but last time they played St Kilda, they won clearances by 10. They dominated where the, where the heat was on. Miller was in there, Rao was in there, Anderson pretty much exclusively at clearance. And St Kilda chose to run them on the outside, spun the magnets through the midfield and got the game played in an uncontested fashion and beat them by close to 10 goals. So that, that'll be the plan again today, you would expect. Saints missing a few. Obviously, they've been rocked by injury over the last couple of weeks and, and no Max King there will make it a huge impact to their forward line. They've got enough tools to work with. I still look at what Ross has been able to do with this group in, in a formative year and an exploration year as to finding out what's on the list at the moment. And he's getting some answers, Derm. I think that they'll be excited by where they're going to go given the, the early returns. And they get Josh Battle back who's on screen at the moment and he's like the troubleshoot he's the third tall but he's capable of playing on the hybrid forward and if needed he's capable of playing on a key forward and what injury does it presents opportunity and there's an opportunity for a young man today we wish him all the best young jack paris the son of world-class hockey ruin sprinter nova paris and his late father daniel batman was an olympian also so not surprisingly boys he's a pretty good athlete he, he had an eye to tokyo 2020 and then some injury and some things meant that he turned his hand to football and he's going to be the third uh, next generation academy player out of the saints academy along with wind hager and mitch owens to take his place today so we wish him well how Mitchy Owens sneak through to the next generation. His mum's Japanese as well. But good luck to young uh, Paris today, Jack Paris. But, yeah, Mitchy Owens' mum was born in Japan, so he sneaked through. There's one you pinched, Joey. Saints will take him. Kingy, and you're a big fan of Mitch Owens. Oh, I am. I'm a massive rap of, of this guy. He's second favourite for the rising star, and I think he'll make a charge uh, in the back half of the season. To, to, to putting his name up for that award, Dermot, he's been able to win contest forward of centre. He's been able to win one-on-one. Uh, -on -one ones if you like where it's hardest to win near the goal face he's hit the scoreboard he's been an absolute revelation for the Saints kicking 21 goals this year but I want to see if he can do what Nathan Fife did so started as a half forward sort of center half forward type won that much contest in the end they had to say let's see if this guy can play in the midfield he needs opportunity he's been going in as a ruckman so he's had opportunity at centre bounce, but only as a ruckman. Most of his clearance work's coming second effort after the ruck, if not grabbing the ball out of the ruck. I'd love to see him just play as a ruck rover or a centreman for 20-odd minutes today and just see what, you, see what you've got under the bonnet. I know you're risking to injury, but could you play him as the... Remember Adam Goods when he went into the ruck? 
and they decided against that after a while because he got the knee on knee syndrome and a little bit of instability in the knee. Could you play him more as a ruck because he's such a good athlete and if he's oh. competitive in the in the in the actual contest of stoppage? I'm just uncomfortable with young bodies like this getting beaten up in the ruck. Yeah. At 19 years of age, it's it's a tough position to play when you you're coming up against those those big boppers uh, and there's no easy task today when you look at Jared Witts who's going to be in there. Just so, about the biggest. Yeah, I'd yeah. love to see him just just roam and play freewheeling midfield for some opportunity today. Well, it's a perfect day for football. 20 degrees, overcast, not a cloud in the sky, in the sky, but it's going to be a great, not no wind at all. It's going to be a great afternoon for football. The Gold Coast Suns under new coach Stephen King. Can they win this or can the Saints continue their eight-game winning streak against the Gold Coast? We'll find out first bounce straight after this. Not far away from the first bounce here on the Gold Coast. Of course, St Kilda, they have won their last eight games against the Gold Coast Suns by an average of 16 points. But five of those eight wins have been decided by single digits. So we're hoping to get something similar. They've won their last three games up here at Heritage Bank Stadium, St Kilda. So they have a good record. They've won 11 of their 18 games. Nick Holman will toss the coin this afternoon. And Jack Steele, the St Kilda captain, who was back to his very best in game 150 last week, along with the debutant, Jack Paris. A nice moment for him as they exchange gifts. How do you see this one panning out, Kingy? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think the Saints have got a real opportunity. Uh, you know, Ross will be drilling into the importance of this win. A, a gettable opponent, a club in, in crisis. They've hardly trained this week. There's been more mental tax and toll go on over the last four or five days than this club has desired. It'll be a challenge for them to find to find again, to go again. They've been in, in this situation many times before, but oh, I think there's a real opportunity for the Saints to, to bring their A game and get a win on the road. Let's get back down to the boundary line. Alistair Lynch. Uh, thanks, Joey. Yeah, I'm probably with you, Kingy. I think it's a game really set up for the, the Saints, no doubt about that. We know defensively they're very well drilled, very strong. Their biggest issue is when they get the ball, scoring from their inside 50s. They don't convert those opportunities. They've ranked uh, high enough they get the ball in there, and then with King out, they're going to have to find a different way. But I think the inclusion of Hill on the wing again today, they've got to make sure they hit targets. Owens will be one of those key players, no doubt. So I think the game will hinge on whether St Kilda can get that ranking up from 18th and be midfield um, in the context of this round. Really important game for the Saints to stay in touch with the top four, and obviously a huge one for the Suns. That's going to be a big factor this afternoon, Durham, the St Kilda forward line. They're going to have four teenagers in that forward line with Caminiti, Paris, Owens as well, Filippo. So it's going to be a tough ask, but uh, they've, been, they've shown early in the season they can do it. Yeah, but none of those teenagers have shown an inability to acclimatise to league football. They've all looked fairly comfortable at the, at the level in an emotional sense as well. So they're all set. Jack Sinclair will start on ball. Took Miller, second game back. We'll start in the centre bounce. And there's Ralph straight into the action. Noah Anderson, who was the Gold Coast best player by a mile when these teams met in round four. And they get the first centre clearance. Ralph towards Casbolt and Howard. That's going to be a good matchup. Casbolt against Port Adelaide was super. David King, four goals, five contested marks. Oh. Mm -hmm. Eagle Howard out there. Can do that occasionally. Clever kick. From Wanganee Miller up. Play on. So this is the game that suits the Saints. They want to make the ground big, go to the extremities and, and force the Suns into a long defensive patterns. Make them chase tail, make them man the mark. See if they can get the stand rule working for them and get a player out on the overlap and just tie guys like Miller and Rowell and Anderson who are going to have long periods on ball today for the Suns. Move it on. Play on. So a controlled start. Sinclair goes long down the line. There is Philippo, who was in good form last week, and now they get it moving. Third possession for Wanganin Miller. Steele, as we said, was excellent last week in game 150. Against the Bombers, goes towards Owens. Andrew with the fist. It's a great matchup, Mac Andrew versus Mitch Owens. There's some athleticism there. Yeah. 
Yeah. Good reach, Mac Andrews. Mitchie's got the stronger body. And he's got a good leap on him as himself. It'll be Caminiti, though. He'll do the ruck work inside Ford 50. That's the size of Wits. Atkins. Through the hands of Wanganin Miller. Clean possession for Ben King, looking to bounce back after being subbed out last week. And now they get a bit of overlap, although the kick from Ainsworth's poor. Nick Holman just flicked through traffic. Now, if there's one person who's going to emotionally try and ignite this team, he'll play bang crash footy. And that in light of what's happened this week, he will do everything he can to emotionally spark this team. A couple of players back into the side this afternoon. Hill to battle. That's a nice kick to advantage. Sharman starting up forward. It's his 24th game of AFL footy. And along with Dan Butler. The most experienced. That's how young they are. The kick went towards Mason Wood, but chopped off by, speaking of experience, David Swallow. 59 of the last 60 games, David Swallow. Durable and still important. He missed a lot in between, didn't he, in the mid part of his career. In Invaluable for them. King couldn't quite bring it down. Of course, his twin brother not playing today, but good news for Saints fans. They are hoping he'll be back before finals. Damn. If they can get there. And now Swallow again will drive it in deep. Pack of players, Lukosius! Oh, that's a good grab. Wow. <laughs> I don't think we've seen a hover grab like okay. that from Lukosius. Well, gather round, he was extraordinary. He had an absolute day out in terms of hitting the scoreboard possessions in the forward half. But I'm with you a bit, Derm. I haven't seen him just put the cider on the back of the, the neck of his opponent here and rear up. That's terrific to see. After back-to-back five-week, five-goal games, and he gets the first of the afternoon. He's been quiet up until now. And a positive start for the Suns. So in essence, he's your third string, your hybrid type forward. He's a bit of a connector up to the wings. He leads out to the backman under pressure. But if your third string aerialist can do that, I'm sort of just absorbing that at the moment. <laughs> he, he can hit the scoreboard. We know that five yeah. against Geelong, back-to-back -back fives, as Joey said, Western Bulldogs and the Adelaide Crows. 20, that's his 28th goal for the year. In a team that's been challenged to score at times yep. this year, 28 goals, pretty good return for your centre-half forward. And after those back-to-back five-goal five games, he's just kicked four goals in four weeks. So just a little dry spell, but positive start. Wow. Oh. Wow. Witz took possession and gets it back. And now Anderson. Humphrey's in this. King's going to attack it hard. Got the matchup of Wilkie. Real being busy early. And the Saints will flick it around by hand. Always so calm and composed. Wanganin Miller but really makes a mistake. And now they're away, although Hill's handball just went behind. Zach Jones. Holman. Just put the big hip and shoulder in there. Hill throws it on the boot and there is Holman. Do. Really good last week against Port Adelaide. A couple of goals and now Wits. Kick didn't favour Casbolt. Pressure's good here by the Suns. They're going to try and lock it in. Humphrey stood up in the tackle. Eventually, Powell's going to set it, but it went out of bounds first. So three clearances in a row to the Suns. This is this is how they want the game to be played. They play basic football. Straight line, keep it on the skinny side of the ground. If you want, that's the big bump you love, Tim. Yeah, he's the one who will emotionally charge them here. So the Saints have got to respond at the contest here. That They love the game on the outside and they're getting their mark game going, but they've got to respond at clearance. The big three are in there for the Suns. Marshall, who was enormous last week against Gordon Grundy. Well done, Filippo. Strong tackle. Well it's going to be holding the ball. Butler pulled rank and they want to get it moving. <laughs> Jones, who's got that step, gives it back to Butler. A few sloppy handballs early in this one, particularly by St Kilda. You can see their intent. They're looking to move it quickly. Always a challenge 
Alistair Lynch with the conditions slightly different for the travelling team. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, they were a couple of unforced areas. I mean, the pressure has been good from the Suns to start with, but St Kilda have just got to hit those link uncontested handballs. Of course, these teams met in round four at Marvel Stadium. It was St Kilda by 53 points. Jack Higgins kicked five goals on that occasion. He's not playing this afternoon. And Mitch Owens was enormous. Suns win another clearance. Battle called to play on. Good work. Lacocious forced the turnover. And now another opportunity here for Gold Coast. I'll give that. You've got to give it quicker. And then kicks it to the shoelaces. So a couple of poor kicks to start for Ainsworth. Now Alice has to try and make it work. Steps through a couple of tackles pretty easily in the end. And now Ainsworth decides to go towards the top of the square. Free kick, Casbolt. He, he started well. He started well. He, he's positioning on Casbolt. Howard has been absolutely perfect. Big presence in this forward 50 is Levi. Yeah, Levi didn't work back hard in, into him when, when he got marked Stay against up. in the first, first 50 entry. St Kilda's ball movement's clear. There's young Paris with his first possession in AFL footy. And again, the handball game of St Kilda doesn't quite work out. They're not handling the pressure at the moment. St Kilda, they're getting their hands on the ball enough, but just not responding to this pressure that we heard from Stephen King had to be uh, really high from the start of the game. Jones, one of those, just been a little bit fumbly early. Powell. And now Wits releases Swallow. It goes with the outside of the boot. It's going to be a contest. Windhager went without it. And then Humphrey just beats a couple. Gets boot to ball. Lacocious. It's going to be a tough one to take. And now King. Great smother from Stocker. Just having trouble getting a pass halfway at the moment. St Kilda. And again, the Gold Coast pressure's good. That time it was Atkins. Now, Alice, can he find a mark this time? Eventually they do. Clever kick. And everyone wants Rory Atkins to go back and have a shot for goal. The Ben King snap is quite mechanical. That's 99 times out of 100, that's going to be smothered. And if you're going to try and work your way through a crafty situation, you can't just mechanically throw the ball onto your boot and take a snap when the bloke is there ready to snap it. You've got to develop new ways to get around and get that shot away cleanly. Yet to kick a goal this season, Rory Atkins, and that'll come back nicely. Positive start by the Suns. They got the first couple on the board. It's been a terrific start, and, and as we said in the, in the pre-game, Dermot, they're, they're getting it done at the goal face. Five-one in favour of the Suns at clearance, and it's Miller who's gone back in there. First week back last week, he played predominantly half forward and just come up to the odd stoppage, but didn't go in at centre bounces, whereas this week he's right back in there being the leader that they need. They're hard to beat at the coal face. We know what we know what Raoul is and we know what Miller and Anderson want to be. It's a good start for the Suns. Five Fantastic bit of play on the back flank. When they had the boundary line throwing, they fed the ball backwards, but rather than squirt it sideways, handball chain came through the traffic and out the front side, and that gave their forwards a real chance. That's Caminiti that's going to do the second ruck work at the moment. His handball, Sinclair, slip. There is Miller. And it's going to be another clear. It's Flanders. Been in good form. Yep. His handball. Couldn't find Ainsworth. And St Kilda happy just to clear the 50 for the time being. There's Long, the former Saint. Miller and Anderson. And again, they'll go back inside deep. Big pack of players. Flanders, clever little kick. Will it curl back enough? Not quite. He was under the drop of the ball then, Flanders, and he sensed the big men around him, and he che double-checked himself said, no, I'll just swing around. Took three or four steps to the front of there that, where the pack was going to be. That was really well played by him. Thought it through very well. Ten inside 50s to two at this stage. They're just not tough enough at the moment to kill him. They're getting embarrassed in traffic. Got to get a win somewhere around the middle of the ground, though. Paris. Little handball, Filippo Jones. The pressure's been unrelenting for right the Gold Coast Suns early. And that's what Paris is in the side to do. 
tackle and pressure using speed. That was really clever not to give away the free kick there and harass 3v1. Did well. Yeah, Ritz took advantage of that size and strength, got it to the outside. And again, Anderson to Lacocious, who just couldn't finish the deal. He'll be disappointed with that. Almost had it sewn up, but they still might get a look. Anderson follows up, snaps for goal. A bit too easy. And the Suns are up and about. Big Witsy at the stoppage. That yeah. came from stoppage. That is the epitome of a hit out to advantage. Sees his opponent, sees his teammate on the outside. Watch this go to the outside, into the space, into yeah. the path, and they're away. But look who kicks the ball. Anderson kicks the ball. He's working off Sinclair. He sees that they're going to win the ball and he keeps going. Sinclair doesn't go with him. He gives up on the chase. There's no defensive effort there at all from Sinclair. That is poor. Yeah, Have they is. turned up the Saints or not? That's awful defensive play there from St Kilda. Right from stoppage. They've been embarrassed at stoppage. 7-1. Anderson and Sinclair head-to-head -head at the stoppage. And just from there, he's, he's obtained two disposals and a goal. Alarm bells going off everywhere in the St Kilda coach's box. Noah Anderson was brilliant, as we said the last time these two teams met. He's started in great fashion. This time they'll get an entry their way. St Kilda. Oh, Wood! Got up a minute early and almost brought it down. <laughs> that was great. And now McPherson, there's Paris again. Great defensive pressure. Can they force the turnover? Got a stoppage. I just can't believe how fumbly St Kilda are at the moment and how hesitant they are Thanks. with their handball game. Right. Levi, oh, Trevor Barker is he hung there for a while, didn't he? Terrific. Had the sit, just couldn't finish. As now Sinclair will drive it deep. This time he does the discipline thing, Wood. Got the fist in. Mac Andrew. Humphrey. Him some more opportunity up around the ball. Just kicks the grass. It'll suit Oya, who's got the speed, couldn't take it cleanly. Well done, battle. Another handball missed the target. Coleman. It'll be Stocker and Ainsworth. First back, Howard. And they just love an uncontested mark here, St Kilda, and just ease the pressure, and they will, through battle. Oh. Now, Windhager tries to squeeze one on the left boot, playing a bit of half-back in recent weeks, and again, not going anywhere. That says everything, doesn't it, that tackle there? And it's that part of the ground. The mid-zone turnovers from uh, Gold Coast has been first class. On numerous occasions, St Kilda tried to get through, but either missed handball or sloppy kick. And they um, put pressure on the defence once again. Rao comes back onto the ground after having a spell. And he's straight into the action. Steele, able to stand up in the Casbolt tackle. Marshall misses Hill. Jones just gets it out of the area. It might work out. Gresham and Butler lurking. And there's Rao. So it sounds like we're being harsh on St Kilda, but this has nothing to do with the structural part of the game. It's nothing to do with who's not necessarily out there for the centre in terms of Max King. This is just not handling the heat that the Suns have brought in terms of their pressure. Miller. High ball to the wing battle. Had to go back. Howard, again, didn't quite handle the pressure. Great tackle, Oya. They're all getting involved, the Suns. That's 14 tackles already in this first quarter. Again, they'll flick it around the Saints. Hill, a little bit of time and space leading Mason Wood. So right now he's watching all his targets run away from him. And he's waiting for them to turn around and face him. Strong mark power. Standing Cooper. You've got to hold a bit of structure. So if you want to go quick, somebody further afield can, can come straight at him and, and take the, the chip kick, the short kick. He's McPherson having a really good year as a... Small defender now, and it's the Suns. We'll flick it around by hand. Flanders, it'll get to Casbolt on the bounce. 
Tried to squeeze it to Alice, but picked off by Sinclair. Well, this will be their 20th opportunity from the defensive half to try and get the ball inside 50. They've gone inside 50 twice. This, this is awesome defensive play here from the Suns. Just not allowing the Saints to play their game. See how Ellis comes up to the mark there. Yep. That was a good kick to Windhager, who dropped it, but Collins just a little bit late. Well, they're lucky to get away with that. That was still an unforced error. That was a dr drop mark, and it's not because of the heat of the, the weather conditions. Very mild here. Sharman with the fly. <laughs> now, he's got the capabilities. So Rory Atkins, even though he's a crumbing player, if he sees an opponent get a spot on his own teammate's back for a ride, he's got to come over and just unsettle him, just make a little body check. And we get a look at this mark again because it's a fantastic grab. Look at him there. You've got to see that happening. You've got to at least protect the back of your man. Wonderful grab, though. Hooper Sharman. Going to play more forward now without Max King for the next month or so. Across the face. I get what you're saying, Derm. Just, just body check. Got to be careful not to be part of the photo that would become mark of the year. <laughs> Going to be in the bottom of that. <laughs> Here's Hollands. Stephen King told us was pretty keen to get back into the side. Former first round draft pick. Had struggled to get big volumes of, or large volumes of possession. The next level down only the last couple of weeks. He's got his hands on the ball, so they've made him work for it, Joey. Atkins, that's a good kick. He's found a little pocket of space in the St Kilda team defence. And Swallow now wants to get it moving. He sees the big boys. King still just can't quite pluck them, but at least he's competing. Anderson. A couple of goes at it. Saints do well. And Wanganeen Miller just overshoots the kick, looking for Owens. Not great news for St Kilda at the moment. Zach Jones has gone down into the rooms after a big bump from Ben Long. So he's gone down in the rooms to be assessed by the doctor. Reminder, Hunter Clark is the sub for St Kilda. So the, do you think that might be might have been a cork? Might have been a cork, maybe on the hip, and look like the wind got taken out of him as well. Yeah. He's Burns. Floats a ball towards half forward. Good hands, Sharman again. Can he find a target going forward? Hill gives him an option, runs hard well to Humphrey. Got back, did it nicely. And now the Sun's on the counter attack. You've got a bit of space. Someone can work hard for Ainsworth. But clearly playing with more freedom. This is the this is the most fluent I've seen the Suns. Just taking what's there, roll and go. It's less static than what it's been the last few weeks. It's, it's an obvious instruction and, a, and an easy one for the interim coach. Bit of the caretaker effect. Yeah. Just play with a bit more freedom. That's a great shot. They see the way the other side, they're holding their width on the ground as well. Touch, play on. Play on, touch. Heard the umpire called touch. So Howard's going to be under pressure. He's going to come back in, sitting under his person. to get it going. Casbolt's got an opportunity to run and jump at this deep. His hands were good last week. Just went through the fingertips and Google Howard happy to see that ball out. It was a real fumble, that one. Um, five times, King has got his hands to the footy in an aerial contest and he's, he's grasping. The first two times he was expecting a bit of contact and just shied his eyes away a little bit. So he's got to get something going to get his confidence up. Look at the back from which was a good one. Anderson didn't go with the left boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll stay alive. Hollands. They're queuing up everywhere inside 50. They could have raffled it, Humphrey or Rao. And it's Matty Rao. They'll go back and have a shot from 50 out. And they work away from stoppage. The Suns is aggressive and it's proactive, but you really have to ask questions about the Saints midfield at the moment. Are they absolutely invested in the defensive side of the game? You'd have to say no. And at the clearance and contest, they're being mauled. Quarter time can't come quick enough for Ross Lyon. Just the five goals, two this season for Matty Rao. Is he going to get the journey? Not quite. So if you just look at the basic principle of ground 
where the ball is on the ground. 16 inside 50s, and we've still got four and a half minutes to go. They're going to go inside 50 20 times for the for the quarter. If you extrapolate that to 80, that's a belter. It was an aggressive kick from Wangadee Miller, but it was a beauty. And now it opens up the whole field for the Saints. Oh, Gresham just works it out. They can get a good look. He goes to Butler. Is he going to go for home? He's going to try and square it up. Caminiti. Well done, Collins. Oh. And easy to move him out the way and then cross through from behind. That was flat chat, ran into the umpire in the middle of the ground and ended up upending himself, and the umpire was oblivious to it. It's a good shoulder block. Good speed on this game. Both teams want to get the ball moving. Owens. That's a great tackle. Well we talk about the caretaker, Coach Kingy. The last 14 interim coaches, a 6-8 and eight oh, record, then loss record. Should have been 7-7, seven, seven except for, a, for an interchange. Brett Ratton, yep. <laughs> Early in the season. Got an interim interchange attended now, the Kangaroos. <laughs> the Suns have certainly been up for the fight early in this contest. Josh Battle, 11 disposals, a lot of ball in the back half for St Kilda. Matty Rowell and Anderson continuing on their super form with eight apiece. So if you just look at how they're playing this game, the Suns, winning clearance, getting the territory that you talked about earlier, Dermot, and then locking the ball in there and forcing error. 13, they've, they've got uh, they've got 19 points already on forward half turnovers. They average 23 points per game this year. So that's a that's an unbelievable start defensively in terms of their positioning for the Suns. But you also made mention that you know, they've, they've, they've got a freedom. They're, they're very low normally for marking and, and playing on. They're doing it today. There you go. Kick squeezed out, Van Holman. They look to get it moving, Lacocious couldn't get around battle. Well done, Holman, an important hand in it. Flanders. Well done, Stocker. They're very lucky to only be 19 points down. Yeah. The Suns really haven't put them away, given the high volume of opportunities going inside 50. They've held up defensively, the Saints, but they prefer the ball down the other end of the field. Owens, oh, a bit fortunate, got it back and then tries to squeeze one to Gresham, who's got a couple of metres separation. Can he find a mark? Butler, nice pick-up, great tackle, Hollands. And they get back in numbers. McPherson to Ellis. Just got to hit that, Gresham. Just yep. got to hit it. It's a simple kick. It's a 15 to 20 metre t uh, short pass. That at this no. level must be made. You're right, King. That was almost typical of the Saints' first quarter. They're off the ball, but when they finally get it, they haven't got the composure or poise to hit the targets. Just simple errors are costing them, and then they're not defending the other way. Sun's happy just to take a little bit of steam off this one now. They've worked hard for their three-goal lead. They're probably thrilled to take a clear a, a, a stoppage, stoppage because the, the dominance has been obvious. It reads as 10-6, but the, the power out of stoppage has been evident for the Suns. And you'd think the scores will flow if they can continue to be as proactive as they have. Wits dominating the ruck at the moment with his hit outs. Gets it back from Atkins. Clever handball. Swallow. Been good. St Kilda have now dropped one behind the ball at Sinclair. Oh. Holman didn't like the treatment he was getting from Webster. And now the Saints might look to use the out number. Webster has a player on wide. It's a clever kick to Dan Butler. Finds Roll Marshall. This is a nice build up. Can crouch. Find a mark inside 50. Goes to the pocket. Caminiti did well. And it's not easy to beat Collins in a one on one. That's a really good grab. Beautifully described too, Joey, because he is such a good one-on-one -on -one defender. There's no easy balls taken against him in a one-on-one. -on -one. Has the responsibility of almost being the number one man again now without Max King. Uh, the check side needs work. <laughs> it's been a fine for them though, Joey. He's been good. Hard to find a guy, you know, at the next level down to bring last man on the list. And find close to 20 goals. 18, 18 weeks later, he's done well. That's a great kick. 
a good call turn. Beautiful kick. Hit the space. Stand. Big pocket of space there on the back flank. And he recognised his only his teammate was the only one who could make it on the fly. King involved in another contest. Wits. Doing it on the ground as well. Kick inside 50. Tough bounce for Levi Casbolt. Ball will stay in. Windhager. Webster. This time it's a bit of perceived pressure. He just wanted to get it out of the area. Oh, oh this kick from Long might be costly. And that was really well done by Charlie Ballard, actually. Gresham was going to be off to the races. Last chance for the Saints. Suns get back. So Butler tries to squeeze something well done. Mac Andrew. Paris has had some good moments in this first quarter defensively. Well done, Brandon Ellis. And time might just end up beating the Suns here. But it was a pretty formidable first quarter. New coach Stephen King will be mighty pleased with what his side have dished up. And they probably deserve more than their 19-point lead at quarter time. Saints hold up defensively. And there is interim coach Stephen King discussing what they're going to talk about at quarter time. But he'd be pleased. And the Suns, well, they lead the Saints by 19 points. Quarter time, Heritage Bank Stadium. And there's no more Cudley Ross, I wouldn't have thought, at quarter time. Because for the first time this year, the Gold Coast Suns have kicked the first three goals of the game. And it's their equal biggest quarter time lead of the season. And St Kilda, well, they have their work cut out after the Gold Coast. As we see, Atkins, Lacocious and Anderson really took them to town. Their pressure was elite. Their clearance work was strong. And some of their senior players are getting a lot of the ball. And luckily, St Kilda's defenders were able to hold up pretty well in that first quarter to repel 20 inside 50s to nine. And David King, you want to take a look at the clearances in particular, because that's where Gold Coast are doing most of their damage. Yeah, they've won 11 clearances, and seven of, the, of those have gone inside the forward 50. And you start to think, OK, how is that happening? They're, they're good inside the contest, that, that's their asset. But once they've got to the ball to the outside, their follow-up work and their desire to run and charge is first class, and the Saints just can't go with them. They either can't physically or they can't, they won't push themselves mentally. Anderson here follows up again. Sinclair, it's it's a six metre gap that stays six metres the whole way down the field. Not good enough from a Saints point of view, but let's give credit to this offensive juggernaut today that we're seeing in the first quarter. 20 inside 50s, Doom. It's a fantastic start. That, that goes to 20 per quarter. They get bashed. Yeah. Well, let's get down to the boundary line. Alistair Lynch, we saw Zach Jones look to be a bit sore late in that first term. Yeah, absolutely. He went off after copying a big hit from uh, Ben Long, as we said. So probably he spent about 10 minutes down in the rooms. And he was assessed by the, the doctor and the physio. The, he's come back out onto the rooms. Just see the hit here from Long. Now, that was the initial impact. A few seconds later, he gets up and takes possession and gets a handball away, but then grabbed at his right hip. See here. And after that handball goes off the ground. Now, he only ran out of the race um, in a you know, few seconds before the three uh, the quarter time break. He did a bit of a warm up in front of the physio staff. Wasn't convincing at all. Looked like Dermot hobbling around after a, uh, a late <laughs> night, I would have thought. So no doubt he's going to try to start this quarter, although he's going to start on the bench. They'll give it a bit of a go, but uh, Hunter Clark was well into his warm up. So he's ready to go if uh, Jones can't complete the, uh, complete the game. Having a horrible run. Zach Jones, just his second game for the season. Having some issues all through mm. pre-season early. In the season, Kingy, what would Ross Lyon be thinking? Well, where did that come from? Mm. I, I mean, they've been a, a, a pretty consistent outfit this year. There's been occasions where they haven't been good enough, but it's never been application. And I think you'd be really disappointed with how they've turned up. That they've been shocked by a team that's had an awful week that are just looking to respond. So he'd be disappointed with their, their mindset coming into that first term. Can they correct in the second? We'll find out if there's a response from St Kilda. Wow. They've won their last eight meetings against the Suns, but it'll be Gold Coast again. Flanders towards King. They're still trying to find some sort of form. Really struggled last week, as we said, subbed out in that game against Port Adelaide. And just the one handball so far today. Wilkie. Big pack of players. Crouch on hands and knees did well. And now Steele. One on one again, Caminiti. That would have worked. Collins off the football, but Collins. 
Got it back to Atkins and around the body. It's a good contest. Well done, Lukasz. Holmes kick will drift far out of bounds on the full. Got a real insight into what the MO is from David. Stephen King now, and that is David Swallow, who normally gets about 250 metres gained per match. He's had six kicks, one handball. He's already at 250 metres, so he's taking ground. He's kicking the ball. This is how they beat them last time, back in round four. As they dropped that mark there and didn't complete the deal, but they took close to 120 marks for the day. They just played keepings off, really and just ran the Suns into the ground. They haven't had that luxury. The pressure's been so good from the Suns. They've lacked composure, the Saints. Steele did well. There's a couple of the young forwards, Sharman. It's Gresham, though. Goes and rips it away. Has time to assess his options. Goes back to his skipper, and Gold Coast do well. Force Crouch back over his mark. So just that reversal kick, though, looking ahead of play there, they had Mitchell and it was on a lead into the pocket, and by going into reverse, that lead is null and void. They've got a shot, and I would have backed him in to receive that if they kicked the ball reasonably well. St Kilda to go back into their kick mark game, and then when they get the chance at halfway, get that overlap, Webster finds Marshall. This is the important kick. A lot of numbers inside 50. So he's going to go into the pocket. Oh, oh, right by Collins. Almost a hold there on Owens. Got away with it, Ballard. Play on. Another consistent year. Sam Collins averaging over seven intercepts a game. And he might have to do it again because it'll come back in. Wood just changed the angle off the line. And Cooper Sharman's looked the forward most likely so far in this game. He has, Joey. He's moved really well. Their tall forwards are presenting quite well. He's not getting enough supply at this stage. The thing I've liked about him, he's been close to goal and gone for the big skyscraper, and he's had two good lead-ups as well. So his backman is second-guessing which way he's going to be operating. He learned from his shot at goal in the first quarter, and he makes amends. And he's got an important goal for the Saints. So I think we see there the plan. So 11 marks already in this second term. Build the ball up. Take your time. Use the, the available. Don't allow the Suns to, to play a loose man effectively or zone off. And then when you get in the forward half, just find the best option going in. Tall targets have looked likely. As you said, Dermot, before, that's a clever kick from Wood. Just take the pace off the ball. Good response from the Saints. Zach Jones has just raced down the uh, rooms. Um, he's actually just come back out, so still not totally confident with that right hip. You expect they're going to have to give it a go in the next few minutes and see him out there and see whether he needs to be replaced. Cooper Sharman with his first. Another successful mid-season recruit. Mature age up. They needed that. And now some of their senior players get to work. Steele and Sinclair. Marshall committed. Couldn't take the mark. Steele followed up again. And another opportunity. Andrew has to be careful. Did it well. Oh. Uh, handball from McPherson didn't. And it might set them up. Wood. Great work from Elijah Hollins. Got there in the nick of time. And Gold Coast to be happy to see that ball out of bounds. Even better to take the free kick. Didn't really need to dump him in the back there. That's handball coming out of the last line. It was dreadful. Jack Steele's finding a bit of footy in, in this opening minutes of the second quarter. Good kick by Atkins to Ainsworth. Well, Ainsworth was all by himself on, on centre wing. Just again, the trans defensive running from St Kilda's not there. Lukosius had the height advantage on Hill, couldn't finish the work. Now Windhager looks for Burns. Try and drop back into this uncontested mark game now. Go around the half-back flank and out the other side. Don't want to play straight line and play into the hands of the Suns. Well, Ballard hasn't come into it yet, but if you do do that, you'll give him a real good look at it. That was a good kick from Burns. 
That's some impressive attributes, Burns, hasn't he? Jones towards Caminiti, crouch in the right spot. Couldn't take it cleanly the first time. We'll sign a contract extension, Ryan Burns, one that's flourished under Ross Lyon this season. Played all 16 games. Brow, another clearance. Kasbolt done that a couple of times so far in this game. Just tried to tap it onto his runners. Couldn't quite get it to Oya. Holman just fell into the back of Liam Stocker. Got to, he's got to get his quota of free kicks against today, Nick. He's very aggressive at the ball carrier and tends to cross the line every now and then. He's going to run into it. Ooh, good chase. Starting to get the game on their terms now in this quarter, St Kilda. Crouch. As Owens one-on-one -on -one with Collins. Philippo offered a lead. Wilkie worked hard from in defence to provide an option. Now it goes towards Owens. Well, you get the chance to get the game on your terms when you start winning the contested footy, when the ball's in dispute, i.e. at the stoppage or when it's up for grabs. So Steele's having a fair say in that around the stoppage at the moment. Caminiti gets up hobbling. So Mitch Owens will do the ruck work. All the best to Mitch in the ruck today. Coming up against Witsy, who's the uh, just a hit out machine, really. He's been the one hit out. 191 plays 210. Have you ever played on anyone 19 centimetres taller than you? He's a massive unit, Wits. And again, he wins oh. the tap down. Well done, Flanders. Used his body beautifully to get Sinclair out of the way, who stays in the contest. Outside of the boot, Charmin. Oh. Didn't give away the free kick, and then we'll see one. Oh, look at Butler. And, oh, oh, no. You can't do that. That's un-Australian. <laughs> you just can't do that. He, he tried to steal it on him there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, you get nicknames for stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's rather skunky. Well, luckily, the umpire agreed to him. He gave it back to Cooper Sharman, who's had an excellent start to this game. He's got his second and the Saints second. And they get back within seven points. <laughs> <laughs> that's tickled your fancy, hasn't it? I reckon that's hilarious. It's fantastic work in the square. He had back position. You can argue whether it was hands in the back or not. Just a touch there and then put his head down and Benny Long was just too, too aggressive. And then eight seconds later, Dan Butler says, I reckon I can sneak, sneak this off him here. Look, look, I'm going to take that. That's mine. Thank you. <laughs> and I said, no, I don't think I can let you do that. He's a little stiff. He's probably playing in the right era for that not to be in the back. Cooper Sharman has been good, been lively. And he's stepping up in the absence of Max King. And St Kilda is settling into this game. Although Rao continue to work hard around the clearances. Good tackle from Steele it was. And now Butler's going to drop it cold, holding the ball. Oh, that's a good play. Came out with pace. Hit up the leading target. Precocious finds Alice, who's too far out to score. Hard running for Tuknella. Do they miss this guy? He has such an impact on this football club in, in, in totality, really. His leadership during the week, his game day leadership, his instruction. We know he's an elite talent and what he brings in terms of what he can do with the ball and his ball winning capabilities, but they've, they've really missed his leadership. So witsy has gone to the far pocket on the point post. So there's a bit of a drift on Breeze. The only place he can really stay in play is on the far point post. And Witch positions himself out. He's hooked. Not a noted goal kicker, Tuke Miller. But good to see him back. Second game back off that 10-week layoff at the meniscus. At the 20 disposals and a goal. Playing half forward. And that lost to Port Adelaide. A bit more midfield time today. Josh Battle and Brad Crouch with the 12 disposals. Alice and Flanders. If the Suns can take this uncontested mark game off them, sorry, Joey, then, then, then they can lock the ball in their forward half. They did in the first term, but they just let them out a couple of times. Well, they forced the kick long, but Philippo was able to get a run and jump at it. 
And he wants to look for that Emma. left boot. It's a good kick. Lowered the eyes, found Paris, who had three tackles in the first quarter. He was lively. But he shaped to go long then. That was the disguise of a good pulled kick. And the kids all trying to work together. Paris looking for either Owens or Sharman. Well done, Mitch yeah. Owens. Great That's game. what he can do. He wins contest in the forward 50. And he'll go back and try and have a crack at his first for the afternoon. So he's, he's involved in the marking contest initially, Dern, and his recovery is first rate. What, what, what do you see him do that separates him from the also rents? Oh, you nailed it right there. His second efforts. I mean, so many players think my function is, and that's it. That's the sum of it. No, he, he just keeps playing. Still only 19 years of age. 21 goals for the season. And he hooks that one badly. It's fair enough to say, so someone like Levi Kasbok, he, he can clunk the mark, but when the ball hits the ground, he can't do much else. Mitchie Owens isn't as big as Levi, clearly, but he goes for the ball, and then the game's not over. He's got more to add. He's got other attributes which he brings. And now it's the Suns who look to use the width of the field. Saints have manned up pretty well. And they get the extra number through Wanganeen Miller. Again, St Kilda have the numbers, but well done by Brandon Ellis. See, that kick that came out, Wanganeen Miller, Ainsworth allowed Wanganeen Miller to go and get Jared that ball. Anthony. And he sagged back himself. So what he's doing then is thinking, I hope one of my teammates wins it. Wanganeen Miller gets caught in between and I get an easy one over the back. It's again, beautiful palm down to Alice. The defence from... He copies his teammate's boot then. Stocker on Howard it was. Yeah. yeah. Slow. Just take a look at the replay there. It was a good fist from Howard boot. and then... Bang. Almost, yeah. Jones looks to be OK. Sweet. Good tackle on Sinclair. It was good enough to get... Boot the ball. Long. Wits. Oh, Fake oh, down Sinclair. Bit of trickery from the big man. And then again, Wilkie. Too good for Ben King on that occasion. And then works hard to follow up offensively now. The vice captain. So I've seen enough now. Let's take a look. Oh. It's there. How's that? A little bit of candy for the big man. I've seen enough of King at full forward at the moment. I'm, I'm taking him into another position now. He, they're all over him. And he's, when he does get first dibs on it, he's dropping them. So I'm going to try... I, I would try and find him in a position where he can get some easier... easier access to the footy. So do you please him or do you please the team? Well, you've got to look after the team. But you want to try and do both at the one time. Is there another spot we can run him to where he can find a bit of the footy? Well, he's getting gobbled up. Zach Jones did well. Mason Wood couldn't bring it down. And now here go the Suns. Powell, Lacocious. It's going to be an advantage. The free kick was paid, not the mark. So Miller goes looking for King. He was able to take it cleanly off hands on that occasion. Now Holman wants his left. Flicks it out to Hollands. Will he go for home? He's got the leg. He lets it fly. It's a good effort. Quite. Clear out. Keep coming, boys. Five disposals for Elijah Hollands. Oh, he's going down the middle. Good kick in the first quarter that set up an opportunity. That was aggressive. Battle almost made it work, but the Suns get the extra numbers. Atkins has used the ball pretty well today. Nice hit. Miller again did well. Do you notice Lukosius when he turned around that, that kick in, his soft hands dropped it to the front, knowing he's going to get pressure, probably not a mark. And then guarding against, is there a knock on punch? So he dropped it in front of him for the advantage of his teammate Crummy. Ben Ainsworth has kicked 14 goals in 14 games this year. Playing more up the ground. On a wing this season. Normally pretty good. He sneaks that one home. Nice finish. Home 
ground knowledge of the set shot there, wasn't it? That little tail of left to right with the breeze coming through that goal face. There's the aftermath of that kick in. It went wrong. And Brandon Ellis says to him, just hold it. You can kick this. Just settle down. Let's get one on the board while, we, while it's being offered. Like that one, Ben Ainsworth. And it was an important Ruck. steadier. Ruck but the Suns have just found it a bit more difficult in this second term. <laughs> Marshall now with an opportunity against Levi Casbolt. Second Levi. ruck. He's just struggling to get in the game, Levi, after a strong performance last week. So there's an opportunity. Good clearance. Gets it in deep. Howard and Wilkie have been good so far. Anganine Miller just gets too much on that. Miller getting busy. Atkins in deep. Precocious. That was intentional to yep, Ainsworth. It was. He wasn't able to find a teammate and then a fumble from Burns. So Ainsworth goes back again. It has a crack at their goals. Yeah. Teammates won at top of the square. You're right, Joey. He, was, he settled Move up out. for the big Move snap. Out. And when he felt the tackle come, he thought, no, I'll just toe poke that to my teammate. His adjustment is so quick. Wrangley Miller are not as adventurous on this kick in. Paris. Look good, Paris. He's been good, yeah. Here's Wangan and Miller again. Beautiful. He's the man they want the ball in his hands now that Sinclair's moved up on ball in recent weeks and now Windhager. In deep. Owens just stands tall, couldn't take it, but he'll follow up. Long had a fumble. Owens goes in, flicks it out. Collins, McPherson would absorb the pressure, and they do it pretty well here, Gold Coast. King again, just couldn't quite bring it down. And the handball was no help to his teammate. And the umpire's going to let them play and be forced to ball it up. 191 centimetres, Mitch Owens. He looks big at the footy, does he? He gets big in the viewfinder when he jumps at the ball. Jones oh, pretty well meant to give away the free kick, big contest. Long wanted to take another body. Yep. Owens gets this to the top of the square. Saints have the extra number, well done, McAndrew. That was an important mark. Oh, and the kick. Oh. Yeah. Got away with it. He tends to use the clubs that uh, have, have a little bit of hang time in them, the log wedge he likes. <laughs> Needs to flatten out a couple of three irons. <laughs> this gave the Saints a small opportunity there. They just travelled the 15 as oh. well. Wow. Our Anderson was clean to Flanders. Got oh, on Stocker. He goes back and wins the footy himself. Nice bit of play now for Rowan Marshall. Throws it on the boot. Suns have numbers back in the fence. Great smother from Owens. Forced the turnover. Andrew had to be careful. Boyer, Atkins. Saints have just up the ante here for the moment. Well done, Gold Coast. Yeah, there's no doubt that McAndrew's a talent. But you're going to take a little bit of pain while he finds his feet at this level in his decision-making. But he, he certainly has some talent. Kasbolt tried to do it himself. Another kick partially smothered. Steel. Got around long. Coming up a bit laterally here. Gresham felt the pressure. High ball. Who's going to stand under it? Oh, well done, Powell. That is a strength of his. He's intercept marking game. Play on. Play on. Yeah. And a steadier for the Gold Coast. So, once again, though, you've got. Levi, who's a monster of a man, and it, 
high marking expert. And Mitch Owen's ability to jump in front just thwarts what would normally be a fairly comfortable mark for a, a man of big Levi's talents. Turned in a bit of an arm wrestle here in this second quarter. Play between the arcs, Atkins. Lukosius caused the contest. Holman in the right spot. Kick missed the mark, and now a one-on-one -on, -one on the ground. Swallow did well to get and be the extra number. Holman just rode the, the tackle from Howard, got it to Humphrey. He sees a player in space, it's long. Will he go for goal or pop it over the top to Alice? He'll do the right thing and go to Brandon. I bet Nick Holman, he bounced off the contact. <laughs> I just get the feeling that Nick Holman today says, well, I don't want to get reported, but if he and Ben Long... But if I go close to the wire, I'm comfortable with that, given the week we've had. Both been very aggressive. Now, he should know. He's got to start it at the near goal post. Still only 29 years of age, Brandon Ellis. That's Hard to point. believe the Premiership player as it just drifts across the face. Yeah. Not a bad effort. Fourth game of the season. I'm really liking Sam Flanders' work. Yeah. He's had a pretty good month of footy. Has a high draft pick of three or four years ago. Pick 11 he was. Originally from down Fish Creek Way, down near Maui. He's, he's already up to the 16 disposals, but the spread in his game now is really developing quite nicely. Good blend of uncontested versus contested footy. It's a great, that's dairy farm area. Burns again, able to pop the ball into a little pocket of space. The Saints are trying to get some speed on the game, but execution hasn't quite been there in this first half, and it's gone out of bounds. Well, Flanders was another one who struggled to get a regular spot early in the season, along like Hollands. Some early picks, a bit inconsistent with their form, but getting some good opportunity now. Playing some pretty good football. Boyer, speaking of good football, played his best game last week against Port Adelaide. Finds Anderson, heard the voice of power. Pops it wide, it's going to make it. Gee, that's a good that kick. Going to make it hard for the coaches, but he got there. It was a beautiful kick in the end. Wasn't it? Just placed it in front, let him make his own pace to it. We know his capabilities from here. Yeah, but this breeze is tricky from here. I think Alice said that it'll be pushing it away from the goal face, it, it would, wouldn't it, Lynchy? Well, it's actually just dropped right off. So you, you'd think probably inside right post, and it should fade back a little bit, but it's pretty still at the moment. Kick the opening goal of the afternoon after a terrific contested mark. This will be a tough wow. kick, but if anyone can make it look easy, <laughs> Lukosius can. That's He's got his second. <laughs> that is just effortless beauty, isn't it? It's a serious kick. I mean, we see great snaps and running bounce, goals and the likes, but to stand back and execute like that. So Powell, Powell has an enormous impact on this team. He missed the first two to three weeks of the season. And off half back, he's an intercept player that can counter punch. You can use the ball really well. I mean, you, you can't, you can't not mark that ball. That's such a beautiful drop zone. But it's just in the leading lane there. It's delightful. I think from the outside, Kingy, he's underrated Will Powell and the impact that he has. Sort of injured that, um, I think broke his ankle, dislocated his ankle here at uh, Heritage Bank Arena last year. I think his ankle was facing the wrong way and, uh, yeah, he returned um, in uh, round three and just his intercept uh, marking and his ability to hit targets forward is just first class. And the talent is shining here in this game this afternoon for the Suns. Out to a handy 22-point lead. Langan in Miller had plenty of ball, but it's been in the back half of St Kilda a lot. Here is Powell again. Another intercept mark. Well, that's not his best attempt, though. He'll have to get back and try and help mop up as Jones wants to get it moving. He kicked it blindly. Owens will make a contest. There he is. He did mop it up. Well done. And they get out of trouble. Clever kick. Finds the release outlet of Vainsworth. Yeah. 
Oh, Ballard. That was a little bit laconic. Made it difficult for Miller. Ainsworth tried to help him out. He was tackled. Now Rowell under pressure. <laughs> He's strong, isn't he? <laughs> he took about over. three cop then. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Had some of the laconic kicks from the Suns in their back half in this quarter. Anyway. Stephen King, some nervous moments. He'd be overall very pleased with what he's seeing. Yeah. He just need to hang in here defensively for the last couple of minutes of this half. Jones, you can see what's up ahead. He pulls the kick. Was anyone on the same page? No, this man again. Yeah. Having a big period. It's been predictable where they're kicking the ball to the Saints. It's, it's the last four entries have gone to the top of the goal square there with no real purpose. A lead had to take that ball into the pocket. Players are comfortable going around the corner these days, so a lead mark into the pocket would have been the, the call there. That was Will Powell's fourth intercept mark in the first half. It was long. He played 79 games for the Saints. Kicks to a pack. Windhager had to be careful. There's Holman again. Didn't quite have the awareness, did Winhager. And Holman gives it to the kicker. And Howard got two hands to it, just couldn't complete the job. Flanders, big first half. High ball, can King mark this one? Not quite. His follow up's been better though. And Hill just tries to run away from trouble. He actually did it pretty well in the end, and then a nice kick. He ran straight at him. You don't often see that. He tried to evade it all. He said, come on, let's engage. And they'll keep looking to move it, even though they've invited some pressure in this first half. Owens. Oh, they've invited the pressure again. Crouch. He's belted Holman in the mouth there. Fendoff got him. Paris. Been good in this first half. He's kicked inside 50. Filippo didn't go for the mark. Powell. Had a really good quarter. Holland's handball, sweeping handball, found wits. He'll be angry here, Nick Holman. <laughs> and that'll see us out at half time. A real arm wrestle. Good conditions on the Gold Coast. Overcast, 20 degrees. No excuses. And the Suns have bought their A game for pressure. St Kilda haven't quite been able to What's the handle it. Come up? Dermot, you... oh. Dang, there you go. He's got one in the mouth. I thought he might have just tried to take a little bit of revenge in the next play there. <laughs> <laughs> He's been fantastic. Well, both those players have. They're two tough cookies. And they'll be happy with their lead. Sam Flanders leading the way with 19 disposals. Brandon Ellis winding back the clock with 17. Wanganeen Miller are doing a lot of work for St Kilda. With 18, but we'll get down to Alistair Lynch. Boundary West, Tick Miller with him. Uh, thanks, Joey. Took after what's been a really tough week, you must be wrapped with the uh, output in that first half. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's been a bit of a hard week and it always going to be, but I think for us, we want to stay present. I feel like we're doing that really well. We're just going to our values and trying to stick to that in our process, and I feel like it's working. And from St Kilda's point of view, they look like they tr tried to control the ball in that um, second term a little bit, and you took that away from them. Was that a big focus? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, they're trying to slingshot a bit, especially come through the corridor, and I feel like they're heat lifting that second quarter, so we had to absorb that a little bit better and go back at them. All right, mate. Great start to the first half. No, thanks. Appreciate sure. Thanks, Thanks. Sure. Well, the Suns, after a tough week, are putting up a good fight this afternoon. Let's find out if the Saints can find a way to bounce back. They trail by 22 points. David King, Dermot Brennan will have a look at the first half straight after this. Well, half time at Heritage Bank Stadium and it's the Gold Coast Suns enjoying a 22 point lead. Jack Lacoche has got them off to a perfect start. Contested mark early, a finish, and then another goal in the second term that was beautiful. And Cooper Sharman has kicked both goals for St Kilda. And really, they've got their work cut out. They have not been able to handle the pressure and the intensity that the Gold Coast have brought to this first half. And David King, Derek Burden, they probably deserve their 22-point lead. Yeah, they most certainly do. They've kicked four goals, four from from turnover, which is they've struggled to punish turnover in recent times. So that's a great result for them. Four goals, four out of the five goals, six. And they have deserved this lead. They're going 30 times for the half. 
you'd think that you'd be able to post a reasonable score. And it's been built off the back of their pressure, hasn't it? Particularly early, it was obvious. You spoke about Holman and Long. You could see they had that look in their eye. And yeah. The Saints weren't able to handle it early. No, they put pressure on them on the back half as well. St Kilda's back half, so they were able to get repeat entries. You just, yeah, they just need a, a touch more know-how to work their way through some of the gifted opportunities that they received, especially in that first quarter. But yeah, they've been quite impressive, and they've taken ground as well. I like what what Kingy's done. He said, look, even David Swallow. He said, you get the ball. He's normally a one kick, six handballs type guy each quarter. That's that's flipped. That's take the ground. Six kicks, one handball, first quarter. Yeah, 38 tackles for the Gold Coast in the first half. So, Kingy, it looked like they spoke about it. St Kilda and Ross Lyon would have said, right, we just need to control the ball a bit more to try and alleviate some of this pressure, 64 marks in that first half. Yeah, well, any time the game goes in the contest, the Suns are winning it. Plus 20 contested possession in a half, plus six clearances. So they have to find a way to get through, and it's generally on counterpunch. The uncontested mark game became really important for them. So they've taken... They've taken 64 marks for the half, but most of them really haven't generated scores, which I think is a credit to the Suns. So when the game's in live play, their pressure's been enormous. And then when they've dropped into this kick mark game, whilst they've taken some territory on occasion, it hasn't hurt them. They've coughed up four scores for the quarter. They've been terrific without the football, the Suns. And I wonder where Ross Lyon goes to first to address some sort of impact in the third quarter. Is it at the contest and the clearance, or is it to stick with this uncontested mark game because it's a slow way to score? So that one there, which we saw there, there was a big space out about 30, 40 metres out from the goals. Now, if somebody gets to lead into that space, it actually is on their terms. But when you go kick mark, kick mark, all the way down the field, and then you rely on pure talent to win a 50 metre punt that drops at the top of the, of the goal square, it's a tough ask. We'll take a break after this. On the other side, we'll have David Zita to give us all the news from the weekend's footy and the fallout from last night's big win by Melbourne over the Brisbane Lions. The truth of the matter is it's, it's a tough day. You know, a really top bloke has lost his job. It's a really tough decision. There's never a good time. There's never a right time. But good football clubs make tough decisions. And if we want to be a good football club, in fact, we want to be a great footy club, you have to make some tough calls. And this was a very tough call. Of Mark Evans said, if he does a good job, he'll be contracted long into the future. If he does a good job. He lost one game after that comment, and he's gone. Don't just leave no someone publicly fighting for a job that's already lost. I just don't get how the club then can sort of look players in their eye and say, this is actually what we believe and this is what we want to do because there's been an element of, like, we've heard this how many times before. There's certainly sad days of footy clubs. As a player, you'd be kidding yourself if you didn't think there would be some form of element of guilt. We've got a real exciting playing group. Dewey's done a tremendous job developing that talent. Success is, is very close. I hope that we can secure the best, most talented, most dedicated senior coach we can find. We're gonna live like legends in the ages of No doubt a challenging week for the Gold Coast Suns and their football club. As they work out how they can continue on this form in the second half. Well, let's get to David Zeta with all the news. And, David, what was the fallout from last night's classic at the MCG? Significant, Joey. Hello to you. Yeah, the Melbourne Football Club looked down and out the Lions, 26 points up three minutes into the final term. And then uh, the Melbourne comeback began and it ended in thrilling style with Jake Melksham kicking uh, a late two goals, including one to put them in front with under a minute remaining. You saw some heroics from Jack Viney there that got them back in the frame. And then it was Melksham who kicked the match-winning goal. So it's big for the Ds. They've been up and down in recent weeks. Brisbane's hopes of a top-two finish, they've taken a significant blow after that loss. So two games out of the top two, Collingwood currently smashing Fremantle, so Port Adelaide to face Carlton later today. The MCG record for the Brisbane Lions, that is the talking point over the top of, as well as Jake Melkson's match-winning goal. 14 losses in their last 15 games at the G. It is the hoodoo that Chris Fagan hasn't been keen to buy into over the past few weeks and over the last year or so, but he was asked about that hoodoo when he spoke to reporters after that thrilling loss. Yeah, probably... The hoodoo lives on. Um, um, unfortunately, it wasn't that far away from not living on, but it, 
but it does. So we just we, we just have to take take that feedback um, uh, and you know try and do a better job the next time that we play here. Um, I'm not a great believer that what ha happens tonight, if, we, if we're good enough to get the finals and we have to play here again, that that's going to be on our mind. I, I think we can deal with that. Um, uh, we'll, we'll close tonight, as about as close as you can get, but didn't quite get there. So the other storyline, of course, is Brodie Grundy, who wasn't playing uh, last night. He was dropped. He was set to play a scratch match in the VFL today. So he applied some forward pressure, kicked a goal in that scratch match. Uh, he had a bit of the ball playing mainly up forward. He'll play proper VFL next week for Casey. Max Gorm was extraordinary uh, last night. So he's going to have a fair bit of work ahead of him to get back in the team. Max Gorm thinks it can still work. The Brodie Grundy experiment, Simon Goodwin thinks it can still work. But the next few weeks are going to be key, Joey. It's one of many fascinating stories as we head into the back end of the season. Yeah, thank you, Zeets. It certainly is. We'll keep an eye on that. There's still plenty of action today and tomorrow with the Round 18 and St Kilda. Well, they've got their work cut out. What can Ross Lyon and his coaching staff come up with to get the Saints back into this? So much on the line. Fifth spot up for grabs, or they could be out of the eight by the weekend if they don't win this. Stay with us. Second half on the other side. Big second half, only moments away, but let's get down to the boundary line. Alistair Lynch has Ross Lyon with him. Thanks, Joey. Thanks for joining us, Ross. Plenty of red flags in that first half, no doubt. But how do you see the midfield battle in particular? Yeah, I thought they put us through, really. Um, Anderson really got the work, so Windhagen will go to him now. Um, we put Sinclair back to half-back, try and get some bounce. And we overused a handball in the first quarter. Then we said, then when we had good spots, we didn't go in quickly to 3v3, like slowed it up. So we're not going to score... I told the boys, like, we're two goals because we're going slow, got equal numbers. They play an equal number of defence. So, look, but unless our midfield it's lifts, it's going to be hard. And one of the other disappointing factors, when you got the ball, you looked like you didn't handle the pressure well. Yeah, no doubt. We thought our two out in the full, drop marks, miss handballs. So, look, it's disappointing in the context of the game in the season. But, look, we're going to have to try and rectify it. And, but it's looking like hard work in the minute. Oh, well, mate, thanks for your time. All the best. Thanks, Sean. Good work. Well, Ross Lyons put it to his midfield. And they respond in the second half. They win the first clearance, but only as far as Charlie, Charlie Ballard. David King, what do you make of that? They're going to send Windhager to Noah Anderson. Well, you've got to do something. Uh, he's had seven score involvements already. They've only scored 11 times a son, so you've got to put that fire out. A lot of it's just lacks defence off clearance, allowing him to get that second and third opportunity. So he should be capable of ceasing that easy ball. Collins towards the wing. King well done. plucks one. Come up to the wing for that. So I hope he's playing that searching role now, coming up and meeting more of the footy. And then goes towards his partner in crime, Casbolt, who couldn't bring the mark down, but almost brought the pack down. Kick inside 50. Wits pushed forward. Swallow went to ground. And then a careful tackle from Levi. It was careful, wasn't it? <laughs> he wouldn't have done that. Five or six years ago. <laughs> Five or six weeks ago. The challenge has been set for the Saints midfield. Rao. He's going to have to lift there. Is Anderson. The Saints are going to put some work into. Flanders did it well. Nice chain of handballs by the Suns. And they get a good look through Atkins. Lukosius was on his own. Couldn't quite take the mark. Webster. No look. Happy just to clear the area. If it goes out of bounds, it might be coming back. It might be a free kick. It is. On the line. On the line. Dan. Sam. Sam. They were able to defend pretty well in that first half, St Kilda, allowing just 11 shots from those 31 entries. They're going to have to defend here. Growl again with strength. Atkins. It's a creative little kick. Swallow got it to Humphrey. He can normally create something. He gets the height. Does he get the curl? He does. And he's got the celebration to match. That is an exceptionally well-crafted goal. Most players just go into that snap and they use their usual motion of snapping the footy. He recognises how much pressure is in his face and to get it to the goal line and not touched, he has to get immediate elevation. So that's, he's kicked it twice as high as the posts. He's three pre-seasons away from becoming Christian Petrarca type, this guy. I love him. I love what he does around the goal face. He's a big body, big frame. Not afraid of contact. 
He's got great goal sense, Dermot. Yeah. That, that's what I really like about him. The closer to goal you can keep him. I'm not sure, I know he's spending a lot of time in the midfield of late, but yeah. I think he's more of a weapon inside the forward 50. It's a great call, Derm. He had Rowan Marshall all 201 centimetres of him and his arms out to kick it over. So he got the height and he got it online. That's a wonderful start. And they'll flick it around again. The midfielder's getting the work. Raul Anderson Flanders. Powell had a big second term. Lacocious through the hands. Yep. Sinclair, we heard from Ross White. You've got to take those. Another half back in this third quarter. And he wanted them to also get moving because they've got one on ones inside 50. And that's a good kick to Gresham. So seize the opportunity there, the Saints, on a pretty simple drop lead up mark from Jack Lacocious. Once again, kick that is he's doubting the eyes because it's not the easiest kick in the world even though a kick from inside 50 it will die left to right late and there's a 50 50 prospect from here jade gresham two goals and 24 disposals last week in one of his better games of the season and trying to get that extra distance just hooked it Fair up, take the area what made about Jake Gresham's future still out of contract and a free agent at St Kilda? Stand. Flanders having a big game. Stand. 24 disposals, clearly the most on the ground. He's been averaging mid 20s in the last four Bam. weeks. Yep. It's amazing what a little bit Stand. of confidence can do for a young player. 26 disposals, 13 Bam. contested, five clearances his last three games. And he'll Yours. continue that red hot form. Atkins also getting plenty of footy. Casbolt, Howard, been a good battle. Some Saints that they'll be looking to get going in this second half. Mason Wood, who's had a, a wonderful season. Was in all Australian calculations at the halfway mark, just the five disposals. Filippo, just the six. And Gresham with nine. Powell. Wasn't paid the mark. Gresham's handball set Windhager a task. He was up to it and then the one, two, but good pressure from Powell. Came forward and forced that kick out of bounds on the full. To the line. Stand. He's won the ball back nine times for the Suns. Will Powell. Clearly the most on the ground of any player. That's a dangerous kick to allow. Yeah, mate, That's a poor kick from Miller. You. The Saints get the turnover. There is Wood. Has Sharman working hard. Collins is going to try and get there late, but it's just a bit too late. Hi. And he can wheel and go, Sharman, or he can spot up Filippo. Good ball movement. So it looked like Sam Collins, he had Caminiti for most of the day. It looked like he came off. What well, could have been a, a moment reminding Filippo to try and affect that mark and doesn't get back. Right. He's played every game this year, Matthias Filippo, in his first season of AFL. He's come up big at times this year when they've needed him with his goal kicking and he's done it again. Well done, young man. Like the game of Sharman, Cooper Sharman today, he's been, been terrific. He's normally a low disposal player, so it's no shock. That's a turnover, David. They, yeah. they got punished on turnover there. Just, this is a really clever mark. He's protected the space really well. He knew he was going to take a little bit of punishment from Collins, who was making up ground. And then to quickly assess what's ahead and roll and go. And make, it, make your mind up as you're in motion. High quality play there. Good lead from the Saints. Are you half step too late to get this big Sam Collins? And it was Filippo who he was on the handover meant to be minding. You don't mind that. If you're under serious pressure and you're playing a selfish game, you don't come to assist. You just mind your man. But he tried to, endeavoured to do the right thing by his team. Well done by the Saints to exploit it. 
And that looks to be the adjustment in the second half. St Kilda, they'll wheel and look to get it quicker, but lower the eyes and pass it in as Howard drops a mark he should have taken. Has to go back on it, there's going to be a free kick. St Kilda have made their sub. Hunter Clark's come into the uh, game, and surprisingly, Philip, who's the one that's been subbed out, so I'm not sure whether there's an injury concern, but he's been subbed out of the game. Kicked it all right, he didn't. They might have just, maybe they marked the card just a little bit too early. Oh, no. Could they have done it before he kicked the goal? And they, well, if they've got three on the board halfway through the third, it shows that they need some goal kickers. Very tough standard. Hard marker, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Casbolt, four goals straight last week. His goal kicking's getting better oh, with age. Oh, and that was straight over the goal on Pye's head. Right afternoon for Levi, just the three kicks. Have a look at this. Dispose his man. Yes. You see Stocker doesn't realise the ball is charred free. It's already gone and goes through with the tackle. Yeah, they're going to pay that. Still keeping on, keeping on at 33 years of age. He's a freak, Levi. Well, he keeps on keeping on because he does something which is a rarity in our game. He, he marks the contested footy. Yeah. Not an absolute rarity, but it's one of the most valuable commodities. You can have this Mateus Philippou out of the game, subbed out after a goal. That's Hunter Clark who's come straight into the centre bounce. There he is, number 11. Yeah. Can't stop that one. Good pick up. And the kick from Anderson. Oya. There is Hunter Clark affecting the ball. Oh, collisions everywhere. Wits through his way around. Hopefully everyone gets to their feet. Oh, that's going on. Ball still live. Howard with some nervous moments. Burns. Holman with strength. Hunter Clark having some impact. Got the free kick. You know what? He's been penalised there because he played honest football. He was having a go at making a possession <laughs> rather than just going for ball security and getting a, a ball up. He played honest footy. Here from Whitsy. Legal. Anderson. That's a touch of all on the ground. Yeah, too much time. Yeah. There's the matchup now, Windhager. That's the first real win he's had against him in this quarter, though. He's still been lively, Anderson, around the centre of the ground. Yeah. 17 disposals, four clearances for Noah Anderson. Oh. Collins. Yeah. McPherson will kick it back to where it came from. Wilkie. So something, something has to change here for the Saints. They, they've got to try and attack Corridor. They've got to chase the scoreboard a little bit here. It, it's time to go. It's time for the leaders to get involved. Try and shake the course of this game. It looks as if they've activated the sub early for that reason, just to generate some more offence. Paris has been good on debut. Handball missed Crouch. Coming through hard was long and then left the ball behind. Let's take another one, Jones. <laughs> Butler. Just handballs it forward, only as far as McPherson. Paris again. Great run down tackle. He's done that three or four times in this game. He's been very good on debut. They tried to find Marshall. He made it look good. But Gold Coast got numbers queuing up. Now they'll try and generate some overlap on this near side. Alice. A really good game. He's got a player out in space. It's Lagosius who can either go for home or try and lower the ice. Well, he was indecisive. He's come too close to the man on the mark in the end. Yeah, Wilkie's done it really well, and Lagosius would be disappointed with that. Probably had to back himself in and go. Well played, Cal Wilkie, though, just to cut the angles. Again, the Saints trying to generate some run from behind. Again, it's not working. Getting cut off at the halfway mark, that's better. Ainsworth presented. Lacroix has delivered. I reckon Ainsworth might have a shot from here. Got your line. Marks out. Yeah. Already kicked one in this game, Ben Ainsworth. He does the right thing, squares it up. 
Saints chain it out towards a contest. Owens against Collins. She worked him well under, under the footy there, Mitch Owens. Rowan. His immediate Jared. first opponent, Mac Andrew. They're out there only, what are they, 90 metres from goal, and they're still holding six forwards, the Suns. Wits winning the battle against Ron Marshall this afternoon. Anderson just left it behind. Got Did lucky well. there, didn't they? The Saints, they got yeah. very lucky because Anderson, that's exactly what we're talking about. He's not as much of a problem at the actual clearance. Rollins, it's the Garrett. secondary disposal post-clearance where he's causing all the pain today. <laughs> Flanders again with the rundown tackle. He looked up at Rory then and said, my ball, yeah. don't, don't kick it, don't go express. <laughs> Room in the wow. pocket, he's going to pull this. Well, they've pulled deep, the Suns forward, Sleeve, I'll get a run and jump, good courage from battle. He caught one for his troubles. Well, that was an important position to get to as Wilkie drives it back towards the wing. The Suns keep turning it over at midfield this quarter. They cannot get a win in the middle of the ground on the outward bound ball, the Saints. I don't suggest Battle stands in front of Levi here. Yeah, he was brave, wasn't he? He does go again, Battle, and this time it's Big Wicks, the biggest of them all. Stood tall and took a strong contested mark. 209 centimetres, 110 kilos, and I reckon they've given that weight a haircut as well. He is a big, big man standing in that pack. Leachy, you know the weights of the big fellas. He ain't 110. Yeah, they reckon he's 110 if he puts his right toe on the scales. <laughs> he's, he's a monster. I've done a few interviews with him, and just he's a massive man. Just the 33 goals in his 158 games. That might explain it. <laughs> still live, though. The Saints have still got their work cut out. Oh. Steele went to ground, had to come out, crouch. Well, that's brave. Anderson tried to drill the ball only as far as Steele. What do they do, King? How do they get this ball down there into the field? They're having all sorts of trouble. Well, this is not working, this go wide, stay wide. They've got, a, they've got a risk contest in the corridor. That's a good, brave play. Fast handball, good release. Kick just over the head of Paris. Oh, he he's involved, he yeah. did well. Sharman, his handball missed the mark. Contest, this is crucial. Atkins, Sharman did really nicely. But the Suns' pressure's unrelenting. Well done, Swallow. Hill, what's he got deep? Wood's got the sit. He can take this. Alice did just enough not to give away the free kick. And now there's a swarm of Suns, and Lukosius will clear it towards the wing. Another critical contest. Battle, Jones, Wanganine Miller. Oh, Andrew did all the hard work, just couldn't bring it down. Gee, that's impressive from Mac Andrew, though. To, to rear up like that at the front of the pack, front of traffic, it's a risky place to, to, to live. It's got an enormous leap. Look at that time. Gee, that's impressive. I'd love to see him front and forward every now and then. He's probably 12 months away from just plucking them regularly, isn't he? Bit of opportunity for St Kilda with ball in their front half, although well, that's not going to help. It leaves the pressure. I think he needs to spend a couple of weeks with Big Witsy, Mac Andrew. Get a bit of size on that frame. What do you mean at the, <laughs> at the buffet or <laughs> anywhere? <Well. laughs> I don't reckon there's much left after Witsy walks through. This is a, this is a. They're making no inroads here, the Saints. It's a stalemate. They cannot find any. And we've got that little shifty handball. That's the best they've moved the ball, and that's once off in 20 something minutes of football. Holland's clever handball. Flanders. Here's the spread again from stoppage for the Suns. Miller had Holman. Chose to kick it himself. Oya in the box seat. Couldn't quite take the mark, but they've got numbers here. Well done, Wood. Got in a later tackle. 
This is impressive, the way they are surge running from stoppage. But this is exactly what this team can become. It's been, it's been hard to watch sometimes this year across the course of the, the season, the Suns, but this is as good as they've looked from stoppage. Wits again gets it to the outside. Another hit to advantage. Miller, Anderson, he's all class. Can he finish? Not quite. He's disappointed. That play you're talking about, though, but, but when... When Tuke Miller ran past, he had another handball on, on offer, but he said, no, I've got a target in the forward 50. That would be over handball. Take the target, hit the target, and he almost pulled it off. No one challenging corridor here. That's better. Got to go. Got to give that handball there. Got to yeah. go. Oh. oh, it was late. Sinclair wanted initially, then didn't expect it, and Stock has turned it over. He called for the ball and then thought that the moment was lost. It's just a fraction late. Gives to Atkins, who launches from 55. Rory Atkins! If you don't mind. That's his second goal to go with 21 disposals. It's rejuvenated, isn't he? Yeah. He just languished. Up on the Gold Coast for the last 18 months. Got, a, got an opportunity a little earlier this year and sees it. That's an awful handball, though. Telegraphed, too late, inaccurate. Not much else could have gone wrong with it. That's why I admire the leadership of Took Miller. He could probably make that from there. But says, you know what, I know Atkins can. I'll just pop him a handball and the team will get the goal. The team will get the rewards. 17 disposals for Miller. Six of those have become scores. It's been terrific. She one out of the last six goals for the Saints. Wow. And they are really up against it now. Gold Coast in complete control. They're going to have to generate something and in a hurry, St Kilda. Hunter Clark, the sub. He might be the super sub. That's a clever kick down low. Beautiful. And it's Sharman again. He's such a well-balanced footballer, Hunter Clark. He's, he's equally comfortable passing on the left foot as he is on the right. And he rarely ever overkicks. Just watch this touch. You don't have to kick the cover off it. Just nice, gentle little dab kick. He's having a good afternoon, Cooper Sharman. And one of the few winners for St Kilda in this game. He's kicked a couple already. This is important. That's a nice finish. Cooper Sharman keeping the Saints alive. I like, David, how he's come at the kicker. He's taken that big grab down in the forward line in the, in the first half. But the other three times, he's led at the kicker. So you watch him here, he's holding front position, and he comes straight at that space, comes straight onto his left leg. He's had a four-goal game before the last home and away round of uh, 2021. So he, he's been here before. But you're right, he's been impressive, his forward yeah. draft today. He, he's a midfield... Uh, a mid-season draft pickup. Yeah, a I couple think. of years yeah. ago, 2021, I think. Yeah, yeah it's a good bonus. Coming out of Yeah, coached by Rocket Eat, I think he was at one stage. Right. And having a really good patch, and they've needed it. He's been the only winner up forward. Can they try and get a couple in a row? St Kilda. And the Suns are in that mood where well, they're Humphrey not going to make it, it easy. That was a ferocious tackle by the kid Humphrey. There's not too many opportunities these days where you can tackle with venom. That was one of them. We should mention the black armbands St Kilda are wearing this afternoon for the passing of Alan Morrow, the 1966 Premiership, Premiership champion. Absolute gentleman. Had that opportunity to meet him. It was an absolute privilege. We send our well wishes to the family. Suns again with a bit of speed, although Oya couldn't quite take possession. Battle off one step. Big ball to be won. Collins went hard, so did Owens. Ballard went to ground. Owens strips him, takes a bounce. He might go himself, Owens. Didn't quite strike it well. He didn't at all. The mark wasn't paid. 
So Owens goes again. And Powell, been excellent this afternoon. And that's a good kick and nice mark. And Atkins just wanting to slow it down, understanding the situation. So Kilda trying to up the ante, see if they can string a couple together. Play on, play on. Ball just hit the ground, so play on call. Good follow up by Atkins there. This has been clinical, really. From a son's point of view, you don't you don't play much better than this, given given what the opposition are allowing. Smashing the clearance, smashing on the outside as well, not allowing them to move the ball. The Saints have looked good for answers all day, really, everywhere. Problems with Anderson and curtailing his influence. Problems moving the ball. You know, coast to coast. They, they need a saviour who will come up at the footy. Hit the, you know, the, the, the function that Lukosius wants to do. Hit the wings on the lead. In reverse, the Saints need somebody who will hit the wings and, and lead to the ball that's coming out of the back line. Just be that link, that conduit between back line defence under pressure and a forward attack. Powell again. Well done, Caminiti. That was Owens, in fact. Should have known. Mitch Owens, he's trying to lift his side in this quarter. Drives it in towards the pocket. Andrew at the fist. Owens first back to bop it up. Ainsworth worked out of it and did well. Windhager. Good pressure from Holman. Forced the turnover. Not much ahead for McAndrew, so he's just going to kick the grass. Although Ben King might make it work. Great kick. Couldn't quite take the mark again, but he'll get the free kick. He worked hard on that occasion. He actually drops this. Hands in the back, free kick. Now Holman. Not enough intensity from Jack Steele on the mark, and Holman just wheeled and found Lukosius straight through the corridor on the lead, and he'll go back to kick another one. Jack, that's it. That's your line. It was as if the Saints defenders expected to be defending a high ball then. And there's a lot of space up the channel. Already kicked two today, Jack Lukosius. He's got three. He's back in form. And the Suns are playing some good footy. Tough week. Handled really well. They've been able to front up today. And Probably play the most impressive football they've played for the last four to five weeks, really. Played full of dare, played on at all occasions. It's created some run, it's created overlap, it's drawn forwards to the ball. We know what they can do at clearances. We've seen that for the last two to three years, but this has been brilliant with their ball movement today. Nice connection between Holman and Lukosius. 11 marks inside 50 for the Suns already this afternoon. And just the fact that he rolls and wheels around makes space unfold ahead. There's Big Kingy. 47 That's games for the Saints. That's against Will. I think Ross Lyon will be getting sick of the caretaker coaches. First, Andrew McWalter, one of his boys, and now Stephen King. Might be knocking off the Saints unless Sharman. Is he going to... He's grabbed at his hamstring there. Free kick was being paid to Sam Collins, I think. Player Stephen King, an all Australian. Premiership player at the Cats. Big, wasn't he? Just big everywhere. One of his highlights was being coached by Doom in the Island Series. Yeah, he was very good uh, when he wasn't <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> you were actually BOG Gings. <laughs> He's very witty too, Stephen King. Great sense of humour. And he'd be loving what he's seeing. King now starting to get involved. 
Is he going to launch and go for home? He tried. He didn't strike it well. Oh. Clark, just a little bit slow. Might have thrown that. Could have got away with one. Might have just got a fist to it now, Caminiti. Kicks to a one-on-one. -on -one. It's an important one-on-one. -on -one. Gresham, that's a big win. Steel working hard. Gets to him. He's got a couple of players over the top. And finds Mason Wood. That all come about from an important one-on-one -on -one mark from Jay yeah. Gresham. Up against Darcy McPherson. That's what he's screaming for. Somebody to win the ball 75, 80, 90 metres from goal. That's where they completely break down. Because anything, if they do get the ball there, is under extreme pressure. That's the first time they've had a, a well-guided kick come out of that area. He's kicked 12 goals in all 16 games this year. Mason Wood. One goal, two last week against the Demons. Makes no mistake. Keeps the Saints within touch. Right on the three-quarter siren. So that is important. Just gives them a faint hope. They've been dominated by the Gold Coast Suns. And they trail by 28 points. We've seen some strange things this season. We don't have to go too far back, even last night. But the Gold Coast are in the box seat. We'll find out if they can close the deal straight after this. Well, the Gold Coast Suns, they have won every quarter in this contest and they deserve their 28-point lead at three-quarter time. Caretaker coach Stephen King will be mighty impressed with what he's seen from his troops. It's been off the back of their effort and their pressure and their work from stoppage. We see some of the numbers. Sam Flanders already at career-high 28 disposals at three-quarter time and a couple of veterans who have been out of favour at times under Stewie Jew, winding back the clock, Rory Atkins and Brandon Alice with some possessions. But, Kingy, it's one of the youngsters that we want to take a look at this quarter. Bailey Humphrey, you're a big rap for him. You think he's going to be something special, and he showed us a bit of his talent in that quarter. Yeah, and I'm not sure where he's going to finish up, Joey, because what he does in the midfield is, is, is brutal. He loves to tackle. He loves to he loves the physicality of the game. He's only had the nine disposals. He's been involved in a couple of scores, but he's just his desire to stay involved, I and mean, that's a quality finish. He, he assessed what needed to be done very quickly and had to get it up and high and... He's a ripper. We're going to get a lot of fun out of this man. And Lynchy, we we'll get down here on the boundary line. You do want to talk about Sam Flanders. You've been impressed with what you've seen. Oh, absolutely. And as we know, uh, so often we're used to the, the same names week in, week out here at the Gold Coast Suns. But you need players like Sam Flanders to, to step up. Pick uh, 11 in the 2019 draft, as you touched on. Already you've got a PB of 28 disposals. Now, he's performed at a very high level in the VFL at different stages over the last four years, but he's a, a young kid still developing the right body for AFL footy. He's had 27 against Hawthorne, 27 against Collingwood, then backed up with 24 last week against Port Adelaide, and well and truly his best game. The other one worth noting is an experienced player. This is Rory Atkins' best game for the Gold Coast as well. He has struggled in those first few years with fitness, but he's playing He's clearly his best game. He's had 27 and kick two today. And he's been getting more midfield minutes, Sam Flanders. No doubt that's coincided with his up take in form and he's yeah. playing a really solid... He's having a really solid block, as we've touched on. So they've found another one. I don't know what the break glass in case of emergency is for the Saints, but I'd be grabbing the hammer. Well, it might be Kingy's boy, Mitch Owens. Looks like he's starting in the centre bounce as a midfielder. But it's not going to work on this occasion because Flanders again... Goes inside 50. Wilkie had the better of Ben King. Holman. Here is Alice we spoke about. Been really busy. And this might go all the way. Sinclair got the hand in. We might find out about Mitch Owens as a midfielder. Now, yeah. King, you've called for it, and they've thrown him in the centre bounce, not as a ruck, but as a midfielder. Well, Ross has told us it's a year of exploration, so let's find out what the kid can do. I think he could be a star midfielder given the, his ability to win contest. Free kick was taken. The advantage by the Saints. Butler. Gresham. Important contest win just late in that third quarter. Set up the goal and he'll get the one-two here. Can he find a mark inside 50? Been in the area of his game. He's trying to improve. That wasn't a great kick. And there is Rory Atkins. He's going to get a free kick for leg.
I can't understand that play. They had Cooper Sharman in a one-on-one -on -one inside 50 all to himself. And yet they go slow and sideways to, to start with. I mean, when you're this far down, you've got to give your forward a chance. So, hey, we, we've got to throw caution. We have yeah. to win it. This is Rory Atkins' best game in about six years. And the kick finds Swallow. He started so well. Powell also having an excellent game. I suppose we're number 22 for him. Taking the four intercept marks and his kicking's been a feature, although not on that occasion. Over the head of Anderson. Got to go. Got to get up and go. Got to challenge here while you can attack a disorganised defence. He's on the wrong foot, isn't he? You yeah. just want him to wheel and, and go, but it had to take a right footer there, so he has to be more cautious. Now roll and go. So I'd like to see Owens, as a midfielder, take his opponent deep. The kick's going to go in that vicinity, but well read by Collins. How do the Suns play this fourth quarter? How do you see it? Do they keep doing what they're doing or do they just play a little bit more controlled and no, just make sure the scoreboard doesn't... Keep doing what you're doing because we saw the perils of going into your shell a little early last night, didn't we, with Melbourne, or well, Brisbane did, and tried to get a little bit more cautious. We expect the Saints to keep coming. They're going to look to get it moving. Steel to Webster. He just blasts blindly. Wow. Gold Coast have the numbers. Ballard couldn't take the mark. It's just an awful kick inside 50. I mean, I mean the fast play on's great. And you, and you step you step forward, you just can't oh. kick it to a three-on-one. You've got to kick it Gary. to advantage. Oh. But still, I think to be safe, they've got to kick minimum two to the Gold Coast. You'd think the Saints can't double their score if in the one quarter, if the Gold Coast can kick two more. So keep scoring. Witt's got it out to Noah Anderson, who has time, and then risky kicking ball, but it'll come off. Flanders again. Go right to the outside. And that's another risky kick, well read by Butler. What's inside 50 for him? A lot of suns. So he's going to try and thread the needle, and it might get to the back. Sharman's got the hot hand, feeds it back to Zach Jones. It might work out. It wasn't conventional, but it'll do. The kick inside 50 was a ripper because he only had one leading target and he put it in the absolute drop zone. Now, it didn't complete itself into a mark, but it got there quick. But it, got there, it got there against a defence that wasn't set. Just had this a look. one. Didn't really have a lot to go for, but he put it in the path of Caminiti, who did the right thing, and then you've just got chaos. Anything can happen from there. Got a little bit lucky, but I think that's, that's a, a better entry that gets you the better result. Well done, Butler. Thing is, that Flanders kick, he had Sam Collins. Had he gone to the far back flank, Collins had run to position there. He turns it over. Collins has to make position to get back inside defensive 50 and organise, and he doesn't make it. It was Butler with the turnover. He was the most experienced forward by about 90 games down there. That's Young. They're going to keep coming, Sinclair. Isn't that his best afternoon this year? Powell got it to Rout. Had some runners in board. Instead, wants to kick himself. Now it's a 2v2. Oh, no, and yeah. Howard. Marshall doing the crumbing. And now Hill will look to set up the offence. He wants Windhagen to shepherd for him. And he obliges. And he's going to pull the kick into the corridor, but it's going to go straight to Will Powell. Not sure who that was towards. The Gold Coast Suns have... Uh Put uh, Fiorini, the sub, into the game. Oy has been subbed out. Miller tries to find his big man in wits. Well done by Marshall. Having a few wins in the middle of the ground now, the Saints. Well, they finished game strong, St Kilda. They've won nine of their 
16 final quarters, and Sinclair's kick being picked off by Long. Now a chance on the counter-attack. They're out here, the Suns. King, it's Lukosius. He'll stroll in and go for number four. And that's the one they needed. Oh, it's a big mistake from Sinclair. It was a little bit casual, really. Well, it is. I mean, you've got to sum up space and whether you can get that ball away without it being smothered. They don't evaporate just because you decide to kick. He's actually kicked it at him. It's just a trick, a party trick, really. And they were mounting a charge, the Saints. It's a disappointing opportunity to give back. Best role in football, spearman forward of the ball. <laughs> down, thank you. <laughs> he's a beauty. He he's, he's had a good game, Jack. Uh, Alistair Lynch kicked 300 like that. Cheers, <laughs> 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 <Gee, Vidash. laughs> All right, two. <laughs> I was a bit loose at fullback. Wow. <laughs> he's had three bags of five this season. Lacocious, he might be on track for his fourth. Play on pride. <laughs> He might have tried, but he didn't get rid of it properly. My ball. I just tried to kick it. It's fine. <laughs> he tried to kick it. Trying's good enough now. Oh, on that meter. Play on. Play on. Clark who came on as a sub in that third quarter, early in the third quarter, Two. for Mateus Filippo. Long. Oh. Having some good moments. Stand, stand. Play on. Which kicks risky. Run it. Nice pressure out of it. And a kick short. Finds Caminetti. Butler wants it in the pocket. No, no, no. Yeah, he's got to go back. Hovering. Yeah. yeah, he's got to kick this. Take it on yourself, young man. Boot the goal. He's a beautiful kick. He's a big kick, a long kick, anyway. He should be. He's got his feet look really big. They're heavy. Big, big quads on him. Got a heavy leg. Hasn't hit the scoreboard today, Anthony Caminiti. You'll need to give this a ride. Will it hold on? It does. He's got the journey. And they just keep coming. I don't know what it is, Dave. It could be the white boots, but he looks like he's got abnormally big feet. When <laughs> It's like a boxer. Boxers who have big hands hit hard. you got big feet. It hits hard. The, the ball gets hit hard. Yeah. I know we've talked about him a couple of times, but if it just tracking forward 50 or 60 games for this guy, what can he become? It's exciting. Yep. Last guy on the list had a day out during the preseason, took half a dozen contested marks, and Ross said, We've got to have this guy. Been brilliant. He's had a pretty good season, Joey. He's been very good. Didn't even really do a preseason. He got there at the end of preseason. Perfect, didn't it? Don't have to do a pre-season. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Here. <laughs> Just rock up for the intra-clubs. Yeah, there'll be a few asking for that type of pre-season program. And now he's going to go in the ruck. He has been a fine. Sharman as well has been holding excellent today, but holding the ball. Darren Witt. A bit stiff. Yeah, he's real stiff there. Witt, he's had a good afternoon. He's won the battle against Rowan Marshall. He was coming off one of his best games last yeah. week, Rowan Marshall. Great for Holman got up. It's 23 points. The Saints now have got to get aggressive from clearance. Yeah. 13 minutes to go. You, you, you know, got to push the, got to push the go button now. Well, you have got to be all in. Be prepared to lose by six or seven goals. Just run forward. Get in behind it. Swarm. Oh, Dern, the message came through about Caminiti, size 17. There you go. They first. look big. Size they, 17. They look really big feet. 17. That's that's huge. The flippers. Kick into the pocket. Howard couldn't take the mark. King wasn't expecting it, but it might work out for him anyway. Oh. That's the size of his feet, then. <laughs> Thimbles. <laughs> Sums up a little bit of the form that just Ben King's finding himself yes. in at the moment. Finding Miles. it tough, isn't he? He's struggling. Yeah. His team are playing some excellent footy, and they've done it really without much of his influence at all. They've got to go now, the Saints. Sinclair. Good. Atkins just did enough to keep him on his left boot. 
That's good. Just keep the ball alive. Keep knocking it around. Broncos just corralling a little bit here. Saints will keep running. Clark. That's a terrific kick. Butler couldn't take the mark. He did all the hard work, but they might get another crack at it. Can they think their way through it? Paris has been good. Well done, Long again. Dan Butler, if you're four goals down and you, and you really need a shot at well, you've got to take those. You've got to seize those opportunities. Give a second the opportunity here to stop it. Get creative, get on the move. So this is it. it yeah, you, that's a pretty simple take. Just let it get in on him a little quick. Crouch to go, get the hands free. Oh. Coleman did well not to give away the free kick. He locked the arms, he tried to take the tackler forward into the back, didn't he? Clever play all around. There's the sub, Fiorini. Critical contest, well done, Ben King. Had a crack at one earlier. Didn't strike it well. This one might be struck better. Oh, oh. It doesn't get the bounce. Oh, it's done backwards. Oh, That's when you're having a rough trot. That is Lynchy. <laughs> you're just having one of those runs. Saints will take it, though. They're going to continue to run. They're Good a fit run. side. And Burns is one of the fittest. A couple of bounces. Has he got the legs to execute? He doesn't. That is a great chase by Sam Collins. He is flat chap knackered behind there but just the breathing down the back of the neck it just means that there was inferred pressure on the kicker Burns oh look at Sammy Collins he's calling for it he, he yeah. can't move it'll take him 10 minutes to get to the D50 again I reckon <laughs> <laughs> he's doubled over look at him <laughs> he is stuffed <laughs> Player, just buying himself another five yeah. seconds. He'll do something that doesn't involve running at the moment. Check Miller up to 20 disposals. Would have to get boot the ball. How's the umpire going to see this one? Throwing it in. So not the usual names, Kingy, for for the Gold Coast. Normally when they win, it's always the same names. Twick Miller or, or Ben King, even Rao probably hasn't had his, his biggest afternoon. Charlie Ballard's been quiet. Yeah. It's pleasing they've got some other names, Bob. Agree, agree. And, and they're still there. Yeah. I mean, Anderson's still having a pretty good, solid afternoon. Miller's still doing what he has always done. But you're right, when you play with a bit of freedom and a bit of spark and flair, you get reward when you turn up for a handball receive or an uncontested mark opportunity. And you, you spread the load. This is something they haven't done. And when, we're not having a go at Stuart Jew here. He has his principles and his philosophies, but they're different to just playing what's in front of you. They're different to the freedom of a caretaker coach. You give, the, you give any coach another 30 weeks of this and they'll change back to a defensive model. There's no doubt. They always trend back that way, but this, this looks great offensively. There is Noah Anderson. What a season he's having. Wilkie tries to keep it in, but Fiorini happy to set out. Mentioned Noah Anderson. He, I knew he was in for a good day. They all ran out through the banner, and the and the mascot was trying to high five every player, and they all ignored the mascot. Noah Anderson turned around, walked back, and high fived the mascot, and then went through the banner. He's thinking all the way through, David. Flanders. That's a clever mark. That was tricky to take. Possession 31, Joe. I know you've already said that he's, he's having a PB afternoon. It's a big number. Once you get to 30 plus for an on ball like this, that's genuine reward. And he tries to lay it off right into the path of Ben King, who's worked himself into the game. And this will be the dagger. Something in that kick for Ben Kick, though, it's not a long kick that comes to him. So the shorter kicks, comes into the hands a little bit softer, so it's caressed to him. And he's able to make his own pace to it. Got some afters here, Derm. Oh, I think this should be 50. Once a player's taken the mark like that, there's no need to slam into the ground like that. That should be 50 metres. We don't want that as part of our game. Can he get some reward, Ben King? It's been a tough little patch, and he just... Couldn't finish. Should have been on the goal line. Well, they missed one there, the Umbies. Mm -hmm. 
Langanine Miller has Owens. Still 25 points. There is still time. It was about this time and margin last night. So they're dragging Sam Collins away from key defence now. Oh. Crouch, Gresham, Hill doesn't have a lot inside 50, just hesitated on Fiorini. Their defensive pressure's been outstanding today, the Gold Coast. Obviously a massive week, but they've come to put pressure on the ball carrier and in these sort of situations. Great work from the Southern Fiorini. So while we got the line open there, it's Sam Collins who organises this defence. It looks like he's got, is it Hunter Clark? He's swapping over now. Yeah, they're, they're trying to run him out of the defensive 50 and try and make the Suns' defence a little headless. You're right, he's, he's handed over twice in the last uh, 30 seconds now to get back to that deep key position spot. Miller's lifting in this fourth quarter. Ainsworth attacks it. Has a couple of cracks. Holman will keep cracking in. Right Fiorini did really well. And they're out here now, the Suns. They can think their way through this. Anderson draws the man. Flanders draws another. So does Humphrey. Hello, well done, Jones. But Humphrey goes back Big and gets up. it. McPherson. This might be it. Goes for home. And will seal the deal, you would think, for the Suns. Good job. That's exciting, playing pick-up by Barley Humphrey, eh? Hey? <laughs> Even just the move, the ball movement, the handball chain, it always involves Noah Anderson because he keeps turning up. They work their way through the wing line, back into the corridor. That's an aggressive run. That angle there through the middle of the ground, we see Collingwood do that week on week and that, see what they're developing. Look at that, a wave run. Numbers everywhere. And anyone can be on the end of it. It's a half-back flanker that kicks the goals. That's terrific play. Darcy McPherson's first goal of the season. And again, it was a nice build-up from stoppage. And we take a look at the live ladder. Derm, you touched on it at the start of the game. They will be one game out of the eight, the Gold Coast Suns, most likely at the end of this round. So we talk about the disappointing year for the Suns and a, and a fantastic year so far for the Saints. The one game behind them. For well, the new coach. Well. Flanders. Clever again. Get towards King, who's still holding that thumb. I think it is. He might be... Saw something he held early in the game. Looks like it is. Yeah, that right thumb of his. You know, when we watched the replay back of Noah Anderson a second ago when he was running, screaming through the middle, to see his head just bobbing, just scanning from side to side, just surveying what's ahead of him, what's the best option. Sitting 11th in the coaches' votes, Noah Anderson. What a year he's had. I think maybe Paulson more today. Yeah, he's been clear best on ground today. Oh, you're the ball. Thank you, Matt, release it. Thank you. It's there. Sharman's almost been St Kilda's best. Three goals. And Ian Miller up wide. He's just going to wheel and go. They've got the extra in the goal square. It was Caminiti, but Marshall. And he's just had his colours lowered this afternoon by Jared Witts. Good man. Don't give up on it. Get back quickly. Turn around. Bang it through. Make the others in your team believe that you still think you can win. He's got it. Back to 25 points. In a comeback like this, in a charge like this, you need centre bounce goals. Yeah. And, and this, they six, become six. critical with the 6 6 6 rule. You do get an opportunity. They're actually taking some contested marks forward of centre. I mean, they're, they're going to the same spot all the time. So it has to be a contested mark in reality. But if you're a big bopper, that's where you've got to turn up, that's where you've got to be. Can they explode from a centre bounce or two here? I don't know how Brandon Ellis thought he could appeal the things. <laughs> So he's got the goal, Rowan Marshall. Now can he get the hit out over the top of Big Wits? 
Sites is sending their winger forward. You can't see the winger on this near side. He's pushed right to the point of the square. That's oh, Wits. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. That wins the hit. It's Josh Battle that's pushed forward for St Kilda. He's taken Tuke Miller with him. Yeah, and Tuke Miller's trying to get a hand over now and get himself off the half-back line. So they're going to play to win St Kilda. Owens. Jones has a bit of time and space. He's going to go towards the top of the square. Caminiti couldn't quite. Collins just worried him out of it enough, and they'll kick the ball inside 50. Yeah, I disagree with that one. You cradle the ball at your at your behest, and your other arm's pinned, and you just you take the tackler to ground with you, and you say, uh, let's ball it up, umpire. You've got a chance to throw it on your boot. You're on your feet. Try it again, Caminiti. Couldn't swing the size 17s. <laughs> that is... Bonafide? Yep, 100%. Jared. What, do you still know the boot stutter down there? <laughs> oh. He threw it. Could have been a free kick. kick, yeah. Yeah, he threw it back a bit furious Thank for you. the umpire there. Thanks, Need a goal from this stoppage, St Kilda, you would think, to be any chance. Rowan, Jared, hold the meter. Well. Collins. Did just enough. Miller attacked it hard. He did just enough as well, and they'll take that the Suns. Good desperation. You often wonder why that type of desperation cannot exist earlier in the day. You've got to play every moment like it's time on in the final quarter and game on the line. Owens, another yeah. contest win in the last spot. David Swallow. Yeah. He's been through. Well, this will be his fifth coach now. It was Guy McKenna, of course, Rocket E. Dean Solomon took over as caretaker for the last three games of that stint. Of course, Dewey Jew and now Stephen King. Yeah. It looks like he'll be getting his first win as coach, Stephen King. He's done a long apprenticeship. Good vision. Burns, he wanted Charged. to go into the corridor. It was denied by Casbolt and tries to take him on. Free yeah. kick. He wasn't happy about being, being bought there, Levi. <laughs> now, Rowan Marshall needs to cut, go from right to left here. Doesn't get there. Again, Gold Coast professionally just keeping it in tight, not conceding any goals. And the clock's now winding down. And they face the GWS Giants next week away, the Suns, and then a Q clash. So Kilda, their next four games are all at Marvel Stadium. And a couple of really winnable ones, North Melbourne, Hawthorne, Carlton and Richmond. So their season's certainly not done, but they'll be disappointed with their performance today. Although Windhager has a flying shot. The umpire said touch, so it'll be thrown in. If they can win this one, obviously, Derm, 36, or 32, sorry, win next week. It'd be quite strange to see them in the eight, given the circumstances. <laughs> well, their best season has been 10 wins, which they've done twice. And there'll be eight wins with six to go. So they might be on track to equal or even beat their most wins in a season. That is interesting when you think of it like that. Well, if you turn the clock back a month, it was probably in the, they were in the best position they'd been in. They had the wins over Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs in Darwin. And then they had that big game. And it, Proves now in hindsight a, a huge game at the MCG against Carlton, which they lost. One against Hawthorne, then the, the top two teams has uh, got us to this week. Yeah, they lost that Carlton game in, in one quarter, didn't they? Something yeah, well, I reckon that that one quarter has been the most disappointing quarter in the history of the club, and I think it proves so. 
Sharman couldn't quite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Andrew did well. And they'll get out of jail again, the Suns. Elijah Hollins, who's come straight back into the side as soon as Stephen King took over. He dropped that ball and then just hacked at it. Out of mid air. They've become a, a very dangerous opponent now. They've got a good, really good blend of hard nuts inside. They can win clearance, they can win contested football. And now if they can add this freedom of ball movement, they're going to be a challenge on the run home. But if they don't make the eight themselves, they could, they could certainly shape who does. Owens just attacks centre-half forward. Swallow set the tone early in the first quarter, along with some of his senior teammates. Here's the bob of the head. <laughs> 24 disposals, Anderson. 11 of those become scores. The game high. Yeah, by far the most on the ground. Next best is eight, and then it drops away to six for both sides. So he's been hugely influential again, now Anderson. Oh, clever tap there. Oh, was that? Oh, just waited for the tackle to come. Been one of those afternoons for the Saints. There's Anderson again. Kicks the grass. He saw Ainsworth working hard. What a beautiful kick by Anderson. Absolutely perfect. That was like a quarterback's. Hail Mary pass, wasn't it? They just put it into the line. That's your line, Ben. They've had winners everywhere, the Gold Coast Suns. See, that, that role that he played there, I reckon Ben King can, can play that role because he's so fast. I, I, I'd like to see him push up more and then get it on the, on the open paddock, you know, run back in. Another one who's had a solid afternoon, Ainsworth. That's one goal, two yeah, for him. How much of a concern is it for St Kilda from what you've seen today? You're worried their next couple of games, as we said, Hawthorne, North Melbourne, North Melbourne, Hawthorne, Carlton. They've never looked as fumbly as what they have today. If the start to the game was awful, and they've played catch-up ever since. Well, the, the Hawks knocked them over six weeks ago in the Saturday night game, so they'll go at that believing they can win. So they're in a precarious position now, the Saints. Collins. The defensive held strong today for the Suns. He's got the head of a backman, hasn't he? Well, <laughs> that sort of <laughs> tightly cropped beard. He's got that look. And you look at the inside 50s, 48 to 52. They just denied everything that's come their way, the Suns. Inside. And it's going to be a wonderful victory. He'll enjoy it. After a tough week for the footy club, the beginning of a new dawn for the Gold Coast Suns and the caretaker coach, well, they strike again. And Stephen King, there he is, leads his side to a terrific 26-point win against St Kilda. And what has been a challenging week, they find a way. And they keep their slim finals hopes alive, and that's the important thing. Yeah, well done. Tough week, handled really well. Jumped out of the blocks today, challenged the Saints to a game that they really weren't up for, and their class just stood out in the end. Miller was terrific, Powell was fantastic, Flanders was an absolute star, and Anderson probably led the way all day with four quarters of consistency. And it squeezes, squeezes on, five through 12, pretty tight. Are they back in the race? Who knows? But it's a, it's a big win for a football club that just needed some positivity. Well, they've got belief now. Don't they? they? They believe that it, they can make it now. So once you give a group of players belief on an achievement, yeah, they can go on with it. Let's get down to Lynchy. Thanks, Joey, with Noah Anderson. Noah, 
What's the emotions now after an impressive win, but it's been a massive week for you? Yeah, it's a little bit bittersweet. Um, obviously, a really strange week and a, and a pretty tough week to get through those first few days. So um, we really just had to keep it together as a playing group and stay really connected. I think that showed today with the way how we played for each other. What was, what was the major focus? I mean, from the outside, we just looked like pressure, the contest seemed to be really high on the priorities. Yeah, you're right. Um, that's exactly what we spoke about during the week. We need to respond. Um, we looked at a few areas of our game and tried to keep it really simple. So um, it was really effective today. And was that important to, to keep it simple? I suppose it is every week, but especially in the context of the week, to, to bring your mind back to a couple of things that you possibly can control. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, a lot of our players are experiencing different emotions throughout the week with their relationship with Dewey. So um, it, have to, it has to be simple today, and it was, and it was really effective. So. I mean, it's really impressive that the boys came together today and stayed really connected and we got the result. Well, you talk about staying correct, uh, connected. I mean, it looked like the, one of the most even wins that we've seen. You know, normally there's a handful of you that really stand out. I'm about to speak to Sam Flanders. Tell us a bit about the contribution of a few of these young guys as well. I mean, Sam has been in and out over the last four years, but the last month he's really adding something. Yeah, absolutely. I think the work that he's done in the last two or three years, he's, he's starting to get those results on the field now. So we see it all the time at training and he's starting to piece together a few really nice games and he was amazing for us today. No worries, will we answer a few questions if I ask him anything? Yeah, do right. No worries, I'll get him in, but uh, thanks very much for your time and congratulations on a great win. Well done. Thank you. Well, they certainly did stick to their strengths this afternoon. The clearance game, the contest game, plus 13 clearance, plus 21 in contest. Their pressure was enormous. And as they said, they kept it simple. And a man who was sensational this, this afternoon, as Alistair Lynch touched on, he's down there with Sam Flanders. Absolutely, Joey, he was sensational. Sam, um, on your own performance over the last month and, and today, you must be just over the moon with what you've been able to put together of late. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a good couple of weeks. Uh, obviously, you know, I've had a lot of confidence from the players. Um, you know, and obviously, it's been an unfortunate week, but yeah, the players really got around. I'm really proud of uh, the group today to come out and perform. It's been really good. As a young bloke, we, we all go through a stage where your major focus is to get enough of the ball to get a game next week. So how difficult has that been for you, in particular this week, with um, all the talk from the outside? Yeah, there's obviously a lot of external noise, but, you know, in the four walls, we just try and keep it simple, you know, try and keep it basic. Um, play to our trademark and um, just come out and perform. It's been really good. And you've got a few uh, great leaders around you. We're just chatting to Noah, but, uh, you know, the likes of Took Miller, you must be um, pretty happy to go into the rotations through the midfield with them. Yeah, it's obviously amazing. You know, I've got a really good group to learn off, so uh, any, any chance I can learn off too, it's been amazing. And, and this club is now, it's, it's your, your club. Your young man's been in the club for four years. You've got to take it to the next level. You're a game out of the eight now. I mean, it's still a long way to go, but you still have hope that you can actually push to finals? Yeah, I think uh, the, the group's confident. You know, we, we just we had a uh, message put up to start, well, midway through the week, you know, anything is possible. So, you know, we just got to stick together, stay confident. And I mean, honestly, yeah, anything's possible. So we're just trying to win each week, each week at a time. Well, if you keep doing what you're doing, anything is possible. Congratulations on your performance over the last month and in particular today. Well done. Thank you very much. Cheers. Sam Flanders, 33 disposals, 13 contested, five clearances, eight inside 50s. And it's probably a reminder that some young players at Leetel, they don't all just hit the ground running day one. You've got to be patient with some of them. Some take a bit longer. His fourth season, but he's showing his full attributes, isn't he? Yeah, we've seen a fair bit of that of late, haven't we? That some players take a little bit longer to come on. So even ones who get drafted at 18 might take till 21 before they, before they really show their wares. Let's get back down to Lynchy. Yeah, one more, Joey. Took we spoke, spoke at half time, and, and it was uh, an emotional, um, you know, pressure first half for you. You must be really satisfied to finish it off and have a full four quarter effort. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, what a week to be honest with you. Um, the fact that we were able to bring it home with the win. Um, obviously, like it's an emotional week, especially from Stuart's point of view. Like we're obviously from the human side for him. It's a hard week, but also it's a big turnover for the club as well. So um, to come out like we did and stick together and play four quarters, which we haven't been able to do for quite some time, is really impressive. Well, what's it actually feel like now? I mean, you've got the win, and you probably get a, a, a bit of time to reflect on the whole week. I can imagine it might be a, a reasonably quiet night. Yeah, it will be. I think we're going to come together tomorrow. We've got an eight-day turn, so we're going to have our partners and families all come together and you know, have a beer or two, and I think that would be a great time to enjoy each other's company and reflect on the week. Um, and then, yeah, we've got to lower our eyes for the next week going down to Canberra, so it'll be nice and crispy down there and uh, look forward to playing again. H have you had a chance to spend much time with Stewie over the last couple of days? 
Uh, probably not. Um, it's one of those ones I reckon you've got to go away, gather your thoughts. Um, we obviously still had something to do this weekend in the game, um, but I know that I'll get a chance personally. I know the team will at some point in the future to get around Stewie, and um, yeah, he's done a lot for this club, and I couldn't speak highly enough of him. So um, yeah, we're really feeling for him, but also we've got to keep doing our job. And we've seen that a few players are really starting to develop and regularly as well. Just spoke to Sam. You must be pleased with the way some of those youngsters, I mean, he's been here for four years, but he's last month. He looks like he's taken it up another level. Yeah, definitely. We've got a lot of young players that have the ability to flourish and I feel like what they've been able to produce, especially watching from the sidelines myself, like I want to be out there and playing with them as much as I can and I just feel like they've just elevated the game and um, I feel like with the likes of Sammy, likes of Noah, Rowley, um, I get to play alongside those blokes for many years to come and it's really exciting for the club. There's a couple of experienced players on, on the outside, you know, Ellis is uh, contributing uh, week in, week out now and I reckon Rory Atkins, from, from the outside there might have been a reason, he didn't look fit enough when he got here. But his game today and what we've seen in, in recent weeks, he looks like he's playing his best football since he made the move from Adelaide. Yeah, definitely. I feel like he just unleashed the shackles to that bloke and he can just do his thing. I think once he gets his confidence up, um, you know, he's got a raking left foot and his ability to sidestep people and have confidence with the ball in hand is exactly what we need. And I feel like he did that today. So, see more of that. No worries. Very even win and a very impressive win for you all. I, I know it's been a, a really tough week, but, you know, the season's still alive. There's still hope for a uh, top eight finish, so congratulations. No worries. Thank you, Mitchie. Appreciate it. Thank you. Really fascinating, I think, when you, you look at fresh eyes on the same list. Yeah. So Flanders has it's hardly been in the centre bounces all year. And I know he got some opportunities last week in a, in a game that was, that was, that was blown. Um, but today he goes in, he's in there for 11 centre bounces. They're saying, hey, you, you're, you're in there, Miller's out, or, or Rowell's out, or Anderson's out. Go in and do your thing. And sometimes they just play where they play. You can't put them on a half forward flank and expect some players to have the same involvement. I, I, love, I love what Sam was able to do today. 33 disposals in at 11 centre bounces. He won four centre bounce clearances himself. Uh, and was involved in six scores, the best game that he's played for the Gold Coast. Absolutely. When, when you said Noah Anderson, he's probably your three voted. I, I thought... Neb... Flat... Neb, please. <laughs> Sam Flanders. I thought he was going to push him. One of the aspects over the last month that I want to hone in on, they've kicked only 32 points per game over the last month when they turned the ball over from the opposition. They got 54 today, yeah. and that plays into that more express risk-reward run through the middle, falling behind the line of the footy. Well, let's take a listen. I'm sure they'll enjoy belting this one out. Take a break and we'll wrap it up on the other side of this. But it was the Gold Coast Suns after a tough week running out 26 point winners against the Saints. Well, the Gold Coast Suns they set up the win in the first quarter, three goals to zip. It was the first time. They kicked three, the first three goals of a quarter this season. It was their biggest quarter time lead, and they were able to maintain that lead throughout the game. Every time St Kilda made a little semi run, they always had the answers, and in the end, it was a pretty comfortable 26 point victory. Sam Flanders, we've touched on his career best game. Rory Atkins, his best game for a long, long time, and Will Powell continuing on his fine form. Some ball winners for St Kilda, but not too many winners overall for them. They'll be a bit disappointed with their performance. We take a look at the live ladder, and that's the important one. The Gold Coast Suns, as you said, Durham, we spoke about earlier, for all the praise for St Kilda's year, there's just one game the difference, and Gold Coast lost their coach during the week. Either they've not gone as well as we suggest, or the Suns haven't gone as bad as we might think. But there's just one solitary win between them now, and this is their next four weeks ahead, and there's some winnables there. So the next one's the big one, isn't it, Kingy? Down in Canberra against the Giants. That's a winnable game. Always compared these two teams mm. as to where they are on the uh, on their path to Premiership glory. Clearly, they're going through a dip at the moment. The, the Gold Coast having 
the tumultuous week they've had, but th that's a massive opportunity for them. I mean, if they could if they could find a way to play like they did today, get that victory, okay, we know what the Q clash brings, yep. and they're probably on a different level at the moment, the Lions. But then there's opportunity again in the fortnight after that. It, it just could be it just could be a serious charge at the top eight. And what do you make of it for the Saints? Is it just a dent when you look at their run? They've got some really winnable games, or is it a bit more than that? They're just starting to just battle a little bit now as the year's going on. Oh, oh, yeah, they are battling a little bit now. Um, they are a mature team. There were 12 players out there today from the Saints who've played 100 games or more. Now, normally that goes really well with, with the team on the road. That's their next four matches. So they've got North, the Hawks, Carlton and Richmond. None of those teams are in the eight, as I, as I remember. No, so they, you'd... You, they'd be aiming at winning all of those. I mean, you aim at winning every game, but realistically... But when you've got 1,200 game players in your team, you travel all right, you've got the maturity, but they just couldn't stop ball movement and they couldn't get great ball movement themselves. They fell down between the arcs when they were coming out of their defence. They had very few targets who could secure the ball. And on the flip side for the Gold Coast Suns, they did really well at clearance, but they also were able to punish off turnover, which which was not necessarily a strength, but today they were able to maximise it. Yeah, it's it's a great balance, really, when you look at how they, how they played today, because their clearance probably gave them territory, gave them a bit of dominance, and then they were able to lock the ball in and put enormous pressure on. Uh, the freedom that they played with today, I haven't seen them play on and, and just take risks. And this is this is beautiful for Jack Lagosa, getting at the back a couple of times with 54 points. It, it's a yeah. big number for the Suns. Well, the last month they've been averaging 32. So let's yeah. That's four goals. The best part of four goals, better. Yeah, and Jack Lukosh, as we just touched on that, the four goals, he's kicked. The majority of his goals have been in wins. So when he's kicked the four, he's, safe. he's kicked three bags of five, all in wins, a couple of twos, and now another you know, bag of four goals in another win. Well, he's played 90 games now. Uh, he's probably one of the hardest judged players in the competition, Jack. If he has a poor one, it seems to stand out, and he has, has a great one. That's pure talent. Out. That one there. I, I've liked his game today because that was pure talent, that, that kick, that set shot. Good lead here. That first mark we saw is the action of a dominant key forward, and he's not. No. He's, he's a third string lead up connector, and if he can do that, that's. Awesome. He's got 30 goals for the year now, 31 for the year. It's a big year. Mm. We've still, we still got plenty of football to come, so that they'd be thrilled with his return as, a, as a, a targeted forward now. He's played half back, he's played wing, maybe this is his position. 24 of those 31 goals, as we said, have come in their eight wins. So he is some sort of barometer. But it was set up really, we spoke about it early, um, and Noah Anderson gave us a bit of an insight. It was all about the pressure and contest, and that was certainly on display when the game was up for grabs in the first quarter in particular, Dern. Yeah, pressure on contest, pressure when you don't have the ball. And Nick Holman, no surprise there. He was always going to turn himself into a, a Jack Hyde pinball, wasn't he? He was just going to be... He's going to bang into anyone. Uh, Longy for the Gold Coast Suns as well. Ben Long, he was always as well going to just crash into his former opposition. And this all fed in. Look at that, the, the, the takedown on the tackle. Pressure on the opposition and absolutely full thrust at it when the ball's in dispute. They made them look timid. They really did. The Suns bashed them early. They looked fumbly. They looked hesitant. They missed with handballs. Uh, basic functions they couldn't perform uh, early in this game, the Saints, and that was the gap. The gap, the three-goal gap early pretty much held all day. And, Doom, what did you make of the big key forwards for the, uh, for the Gold Coast Suns? Because they've got the win, and Ben King and Casbolt kicked one goal between them. They both had really quiet afternoons. How did yeah. you see Ben King in particular, you know, sort of critical early, and he sort of worked into it a little bit as the game went on? I'm a little disappointed with Kingy's game at the moment. He, he did work into it, but... I've got to find a spot for him. That's, the best, that's his best moment of the match, that one there. Uh, you've got to find a spot where he can get hands on the footy because a lot of the times he was coming to the ball in contest and turning his head at the impact moment, which suggested he was just a little fearful of something, somebody banging into it. I don't know. I mean, that's a stiff outing, is it? When, <laughs> when it plugs, that does look like he's got a thumb issue at the moment. Does it? It does yeah. look like he's got a right thumb issue, so I'll give him some sort of out. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing him play the old Pagan's Paddock type thing because his express pace is so fast. Try and find another avenue for him to be to get little wins. So I see a lot of faces in the rooms. There'll be some relieved people in there, some people enjoying it. It was a great performance. Nick Holman set the tone.
And the Gold Coast Suns continue on. They've got a new coach, but as we said, they win this game by 26 points. It was an emotional week for the footy club. Of course, Stewie Jew, after 121 games, no longer in charge. But Stephen King, the caretaker coach, got the win, and they keep their season alive, defeating St Kilda by 26 points. Program brought to you by Maccas. Fill up at full time with the Angus Range. Bunnings Warehouse. Get your projects done for less this DIY July. Amy. Who covers clangers? Amy does. The award winning seven seat Kia Sorento. And Harvey Norman. Shop in store or at hn.com.au.